As I walked on through Chatham Street, a fair maid I did meet. She asked me to see her home, she lived in Bleecker Street to me away. Sandy, my dear Annie, oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka? The Long Haul Podcast, America's Irish Voice. Interviews with inspiring immigrants, renowned Irish personalities, and discussions on all things Irish America. Presented by Michael Dorgan and Johnny Kennedy. And we are back. After a few weeks off due to time constraints, we are rolling the podcast out again. We are releasing some podcasts recorded before COVID-19 hit and are ready to resume putting out regular episodes. In this podcast, we interview top Irish fashion blogger Louise Cooney. Louise is based in New York but has temporarily moved home to Ireland because of COVID-19. We sat down with Louise just before the virus hit to discuss her career as a blogger and life in New York. We also delve into the world of social media, US visas and much more. It's a refreshing chat, free from the craziness of the past three months. Louise brought her dog Cooper along to the long haul and I started off by putting my foot in it. Is this his first time on TV? Bar your social not. media. He's, he's super famous. He's not used to the camera. He's like a little, right. little dog. But he's on your bar your social media. Yeah. Yeah. He was on yeah. Nationwide. Yeah. He was. He was, was he on, he on Nationwide. Nationwide. Yeah, he was, he was on, on the front cover of a magazine. We were watching. <laughs> we were. I'm going to reel that question back then. <laughs> this is first time. <laughs> thank, thank God I do the editing. But we <laughs> watched Nation. We actually watched that episode of Nationwide one Saturday night. Trying to yeah. keep myself and yourself did, yeah. up in your apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. What'd you think of it? <laughs> Olivia was going and making us cups of tea and stuff, and uh, <laughs> I was actually ah, very good. It was very yeah. good. Yeah. They did it really it's really very. They did it really well. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. RT are very good. Uh, Celia Homely is a star, like as well as yeah, isn't she? she is. She's you know, She's out there all the time. For how old is she? She's in her seventies. She's seventy this year. Yeah. And she is out there, and she's yeah. just shake. And she sure is she she's from Limerick, is she? Yeah, she is. And yeah. she I, I see her there. She does some shots on the on the Shannon. She's walking now. Oh, Celia yeah. here. There's just no stopping her. She's fantastic. Who's that? The host of the show. Celia Holman Lee would would have been a model back in her day. Oh right, so that's who the girl was. Your that came yeah. to see you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's an agency now. Yeah, yeah. And she was she did she spot you? Yeah, I saying? worked with her um, and my friend Charlotte. You know Charlotte. Yes. Yeah, so we worked together. That's how we know each other we modeled with her for years oh, right, okay. um when i was 17 i started modeling with her and she just introduced me to the whole industry like took me under her wing i got more than just modeling experience i got like fashion industry experience and tv experience and so much you know and she's really like even to this day still a good friend and like you know yeah. but you can't shake charlotte you can't, just can't, can't get rid of her <laughs> just can't get rid of her well you followed charlotte here technically did you was charlotte I did, here but first? i actually didn't know her that well before i moved out so right. she's Someone who I became close with over here, and we're both, yeah. you know, when you move away, you kind of need. Oh, it's a huge factor. He's a very close, obviously. Yeah, you need people you can rely yeah, on. Yeah, we spoke about that the last mm-hmm. time. It is a massive factor. Yeah. Coming here on your own, like, I don't know how, I don't know how people do it. I see it a lot, mm. and you see it, like, and even for females, it, more so, I find. Mm. Like, I didn't even consider that but when I was yeah. living, though. I didn't even think, oh, that would be hard. Yeah. Because I kind of forgot that, like, the last time I was here, you get the homesick burst, but like I suppose the good outweighs the bad. Yeah. But you're reminded of it when you're here. Like everybody gets a little bit homesick, and everybody, you know, you you have to get your new routine set up, and tired, like you know. But do you think people overplay it too much? But when they give it the old, oh, New York's amazing, this is the best country. Like we love saying, especially in the world, especially in the world. Yeah. And like we oversay it, like. Mm. But do you think it could be applying pressure to some people sometimes then that might be finding it that easy? And yeah, definitely. Like can be a little homesick more so. Mm. I find it being in the bar business more so. I see late nights and people hanging out late mm. at night and you often wonder, probably from my own experience, I'd be wondering, there's 10, 15 people here and it's 3 in the morning. There's no way 10, 15 people really want to be here. Mm. There's got to be a fraction of them that are just here for the company. Mm. Yeah, totally. And yeah. I'm for, But I often wonder, are we at fault for that or just when we're always overselling New York? Especially in the world. So if you were sitting there something, geez, I'm not feeling that. You know, yeah. I might be a little homesick and I might be afraid to say it or sometimes you I say I try it. and be open about it and I've had like people message me and stuff and say, oh, it's so nice to hear someone talk about it. But at the same time, you don't really want to dwell on the bad stuff either. You kind of want to... Yeah. Oh, it still is the best thing in work. Yeah, you want to <laughs> just stay positive and pick up. Yeah, and, you oh, know. it's good, but it's good that you actually don't hide away from it yeah. and then that people do ask you because mm-hmm. it isn't easy, like I'm sure for some people to just say it to a friend, like, geez, I'm struggling here, I'm yeah. loving it because they might see it as a little bit of a failure, or weakness. Yeah. Like, like homesickness, why should that be seen as such a bad thing? Yeah, well, but I suppose you're trying to set up a whole new home over here and that just takes time. It doesn't yeah. happen overnight, like, you know. True. So... But 
will we just go back to um sorry now we kind of We're sped off that's all right that's grand i can we'll i can put it back in but just go back to um you growing home, up home mm-hmm. in limerick and how you got into fashion um marketing you did in college mm-hmm. and how you how you wound up here on a podcast with, with two, yeah <laughs> two lads. so it's i choose and i should have to do yeah I, I was always interested in fashion it was always like something i loved you know something i dreamt about working in and i just always thought it was kind of a far-fetched dream you know like i wouldn't even say it out loud because in limerick there wasn't anyone studying fashion or there wasn't really that many job opportunities out of it you know um, even in Ireland, like the fashion industry is quite small. So unless you're lucky or unless you're particularly good, you're just not going to get in, you know. So I always was working in it out of interest. And then um, when I finished college, I did communications, I did a master's in marketing. I got a job at Tourism Ireland, which was over here. And I didn't have fashion anymore. I wasn't working in it. I wasn't doing the modeling. I wasn't doing anything, you know, and I really missed it. So that's kind of when I really started my blog, just for the fun of it. I would do it like on my lunch break, after work, before work, the weekends. It was kind of something I really, like, enjoyed doing. And I remember I'd go to, like, H&M and, you know, buy something and then I'd, like, return it the next day. I wrote it. <laughs> I can say that now. Jeez, my mother office does just that. To have, <laughs> just to have clothes to shoot. And I would work with photographers who were just getting started as well. And, huh. like, I wasn't setting out to make it a career at all. You know, that would have been, you know, it wasn't... So, you know, so how many years? So, so when did you move here the first time? It was 2014, I was 22. Okay. And then I moved back a year later. Yeah. Kept working and my blog kept growing. And then it just got to the point a year and a half after I moved home that I was making more money from my blog. I had no more holidays to take. And I was just getting amazing opportunities. I was like, even if it only lasts a year, at least I can take advantage of these opportunities. I don't have to say no, you know. So even like that, that was my mentality leaving, you know, if even if it all goes downhill tomorrow. I'd saved enough for six months and... At least then I have had all these experiences that have gone all these places and worked with all these cool brands. And now I'm at the stage where I still kind of think the same thing. But now I've had such a taste of it. I'm like, I just want to keep going, you know. Yeah. And so. was, the, was the blog um, like a personal blog, a website or was it Instagram or Facebook? Did you migrate onto? So it was a blog. It was a website. You yeah. know, that was like a big thing. Then you have to update your blog a couple of times a week. Whereas now it's not really that way. Like people don't really read blogs. It's all about yeah. video and podcasts yeah. <laughs> and yeah. instagram still and but instagram is still the main driver is it yeah and yeah. stories and stuff yeah but it's always trying to stay on top of where people want to watch you and listen and what's the, one of the notes i have to keep doing on this was to keep plugging handles so it's at louise cooney yes yeah. and the, you're not on, you're on snap did you just say instagram instagram mainly well, i have youtube too but i kind of link everything through yeah uh, instagram and, anyway did i see you're on tiktok try this is what i mean you have to try and stay on top i of haven't everything. been on it What's oh, listen, clue? it's Generation Z, is that what it is? Gen- oh, yeah. Gen- yeah, yeah, Gen yeah. Z. yeah, yeah. Oh, I even yeah. said it wrong. Yeah, yeah. My Sorry. niece is, oh, she hard keeps work. showing it to me and I'm like, I'm but not. It's huge, isn't it? I don't it's know how, lo- how much longevity yeah. there is in it though because it's a lot of like, it's very uh, theatrical, you know, so you have yeah, to kind yeah. of, I don't know. Does it suit your personality? Um, like it's very, I'm not, it's no, very I'm kind not very like, you know, it's more like speech and drama is what we say at home, but over here, I guess like theatre almost, you know, you have to, act and dance and that's just yeah. not really what yeah. i do <laughs> so exactly yeah yeah we we'll leave that to charlotte i'll get that <laughs> off the camera downstairs if you want I'm loads of it loads on file <laughs> yeah so when you moved here so um back in 2014 you were doing you doing marketing and then the the blog took off how long did you go home for and how long was it then before you so when I left, I had to leave because it was a two-year grad program. One year was here and one year was in Dublin. All right. And I didn't want to leave. I With tourism in Ireland? Yeah. I was so sad. I hate, like, I really didn't want to go home, but I had to. And I was, like, planning on coming straight back after the year. It took me a long time to settle back in at home, but then once I did, and things started going well for me with the blog, and I actually started enjoying, you know, life in Dublin working. I never yeah. had that before. And it is, like, it's a very cool city. Like, That's it's great. a smaller Dublin, you know? Yeah. A way smaller Dublin, or way smaller Since New York, I mean, yeah. sorry. Um, but yeah, it took me four years to get back, so I eventually came back. What's the, what's the main draw, I suppose, for you for New York? Um, why, why do you love it so much? I just, it's one of those places I've loved since the first time I came here, like just the opportunities, the people you meet. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of the main things, like the weather, like the, when it comes down to smaller things, like the weather, the variety and all that stuff like people's attitudes here 
Yeah. Um, yeah, but I definitely find it harder this time. I think because um, when I was blogging full time in Ireland, it just happened. Whereas here, I'm like really trying to make it work, and it's it's a much bigger pond. You know what I mean? So it's there's more pressure with it as well, isn't there? More pressure, yeah. yeah more bills to pay. Yeah. More, you know. I was gonna say, does that kind of come with age? I think it does. You're still very it? young, but you're also like then thinking. Getting mm. a little bit more sense. Well, like you were here the last time, what were you, 21, 22? Yeah. Oh, Shucks. I know savings was not a thing. No, it was literally just trying to literally yeah. drain my bank dry for everything I could, yeah. you know, make the most out of whatever I was getting paid, you know. It's great to go back to that, isn't it? I actually, I'd love, wouldn't you love yeah. to go back and just yeah. have those lack of worries? For yeah. <laughs> but I suppose back then as well, uh, I noticed from certain lads like doing the social media when they became like, whether it be comedians, like I've spoke to the two Johnnies or mm -hmm. Connor Moore and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm curious, is the blogging in the same bracket where you got people then the odd time? You better make the most out of that now while you can. It's not going to last. People You're going to have something to fall back on. People don't really say that to me. And I, like, I do have stuff to fall back on. Like I have work experience. I have three degrees. Yeah. You but know? even you shouldn't even have to explain yourself to, to that I point. I have to explain myself in my head as well because like, yeah, this is that's a That's okay, but, but when Joe Soap, it's probably mm. nobody's going to say it, maybe to a female or, or yeah. a female might say it to you. But I've seen it with lads over the years and they'd be saying stuff to them along them lines. People say it to me mm. about Connor all the time because I'd be friendly with Connor Moore. Mm. And I literally still, well, a week wouldn't go by that someone here would say it to me in the bar, Jeez, now I hope he makes good money out of that now because that's not going to last forever now. You know, that thing's not going to last. Mm. But you're nothing, who's to say this nothing bar lasts? lasts. You, have, you well, take advantage last. of the opportunities that come your way mm. and the connections you yeah. can make along the way and you just have to hope that it'll count for something when maybe you'll move on to something else. You know what I mean? But why won't it last forever? I think it I will. Mean, it in might, everything. Yeah, it might. I mean, you don't know. In some shape or form, it will. Exactly, yeah. That people always ask me that and I'm like, I don't know. I think if it was up to me, I would, like as long as I'm happy doing what I'm doing, I don't really care. But there definitely is a chance to like evolve what you're doing and like my life has changed so much since I started my blog. My content has changed. So, you know, there's so many ways that you can keep it going and keep it interesting. But yeah. it's just a matter of if you want to, you know. How do you cope with that? That pressure of being King. of being on social media every day, just having to having to mm. produce content every day. Because I know in, in a smaller sense with, with Laura, obviously, yeah. we'd go and I would do photo, photos with her and videos, and my God, we'd absolutely <laughs> just the pressure. Number one yeah, of doing it and then pressure. getting it right, and then trying to put it out there will it work? And there's just you know just there is a lot of pressure and then when you're depending on it mm. solely for your mm -hmm. your, your your income like do you, is it a pressure you embrace or how do you yeah i think the the longer you do it and the more you do it the easier it gets like you get better at planning and you kind of know how to do things but like it is one of those things you always have to be switched on so yeah it's kind of a learning thing um but i just try and be as planned and as organized as i can be so that when i want to like switch yeah. off i can but but yeah. equally you're showing the human side i've seen yours mm. like where you're you know, when friends are going home, there or something like yeah. that. There's no point in you just putting up a good video that day, having a great time, because people are following your story, mm -hmm. and they're nearly waiting to see. Yeah, and I, it's more what, genuine. See what form she's yeah, in tomorrow exactly. night when she's leaving, and it is. Because when people come yeah. to visit, they generally leave on a Sunday, you mm. know, which is a depressing enough day yeah, in its yeah, own yeah. way. But it's good that you do show your personal content across the like, as in, or your personal feelings yeah. across the board on it. Yeah, you know, it's great if you can keep doing that, but just don't. Do it in four in the morning or anything like that. Now coming out of <laughs> Mean Fiddler or somewhere. And it's 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 hard work. Like video editing, I do a small bit of mm. it myself, not on your level, but doing it every day. And I see your YouTube videos. There are ten between ten fifteen mm. minutes. Like it's a lot. It's a lot of content. It's to, so time consuming. Like, and yeah. editing, if people ever try it, it's 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 tough going mm -hmm. and time consuming. That's the thing. Mm. And uh, you know, so there's a there's a lot of work in what you do. Do you mm. do you think that people kind of understand it or comprehend the the amount of work that goes into being a blogger uh, some people do and some people don't know some people don't even know what a blogger is you know yeah. um i think it definitely looks like a lot easier than the work that goes behind it but you don't like you know i don't always show the work that goes behind it because yeah. it's not really that interesting um some people are interested in it but like not everybody you know yeah. the finished product is what people want to see you know so all the time you spend planning photos and organizing collaborations sometimes i take photos and they've been taken weeks in advance they've been reshot they've been approved by three different people you know, it's it, there's so much more yeah. to, I suppose, collaborations and sponsored yeah. posts and videos and everything than what you see. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there definitely is a lot of work in it. I don't, I don't think you can understand it because it's not always shown, and mm. 
you'd almost ruin what you're trying to do by showing all the back end of it, you know? I love all the background stuff. Like, I, yeah. when we were setting up this podcast, I was, like, I was trying to get behind the scenes and stuff. Like, mm. it's just me, but I, I just love all that background. But the, the majority of people just want to see the, the finished product, yeah. as you say. Mm. Tell us about some of the, the, the top brands that, that you've worked with here. Like, you've done some of the... Yeah, I've done... I've had I've worked with, like, some of my favourite brands. I worked with um, Nasty Gala, did, like, an edit for them. I was, like, on their whole web page and everything H&M I did the same yeah. that was cool that was last year um, I came over to the Victoria Secrets fashion show that was two years ago um, Clarins some like skincare brands makeup brands I've done a lot like with some of my favourite brands which is probably my favourite thing about what I do you know I've been able to travel and kind of work from anywhere which I plan on taking more advantage of now that I'm here like six months I feel a little bit more settled I can kind of start planning US trips and stuff you know Yeah. so yeah be lots of Hamptons and Montauk I hope this summer then on, yes. your, on your video feed yes but it is good because you also get people probably asking you that aspect of it like mm. I've seen people asking them type of, and they're the type of questions that people that, where will I go to eat mm. where would just what bar what pub what nightclub what everything yeah so you'll get the same now in the summer I'm sure as regards to the beach and stuff mm-hmm. like that yeah Long Beach Hampton you'll have to find I them know, all I'll now this summer all these yeah you should and vlog them because of where you're located here you're basically you know, LI order, you can go Jersey Shore mm-hmm. or you can go Long Island just as easy. So yeah. that'll be good for you. Have to yeah. do a comparison video. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'll people have, would have I'll opinions on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Johnny's I'll very, help very good with the technical stuff. Yeah, I could do so Jersey Shore. Yeah. I could do Jersey Shore. Pack up our buckets and states <laughs> yeah. and call it work. We were trying to go. go to Montauk last summer and the prices were just, <laughs> just crazy. Well, that's crazy. what we were just talking about before we come on. Like, you could look at the hotels there and accommodation in any of the places, but it's East Coast. That's mm. their time to cash in. Yeah. You can go stay at them same places now. A hotel uh, anywhere up along the Connecticut Sound or Long Island Sound would cost you $120 now. Height of summer, they have no problem charging you 400 and 500 for it. It's crazy. It is crazy. But like, more. You can see the mass exit in the city here in the summer. Like People are always a bit surprised when they come to New York into the bar here mm. during the summer. And they're shocked when you tell them that summer is their quietest time. But people just yeah. get out of town. Yeah, and it's, it's too hot. Know, kids are off school. Parents are gone. You know, and it's... I'd love to have their problems, like, but it is, it's worth it, it's great. I found that last year, and I was, well, when we were, Laura worked in the kickboxing place, and, and Friday, there were just all her friends there planned, and they were gone, and we were kind of like looking around, planning what to do on the Friday, mm. do you know, everyone, yeah. Americans, here, they have weekends, weekends are big over the summer. Sure. Like, because I found it started, for, it starts, what is it, Labor Day? Yeah, and then the Memorial. Fin- Memorial, and then it finishes Labor Day, and it starts and finishes bang, bang, whereas back home, you just don't know the weather, so mm. it kind of yeah. just stretches on. But it starts and it finishes, and we just felt last year that it was just mm. just gone like that. So have you planned all your weekends already? Yeah. <laughs> have you? No, we bar- no, we're barely here. <laughs> the Thursday night in what is it, what is say the Friday night in the winter in the bar business, that then becomes the Thursday night. It's oh, really right. weird. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the Wednesday and yeah. the Thursday in are the busy. summer are, are really, are they your busy nights. Oh my God. Friday's a mass exit. You'll be okay for Friday lunch, and then you're dead in the evening. My it's God. only all of us that are in the city, and we don't realize that all the rich people have left. So you've only <laughs> spent one summer here, so, Louise? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. yeah, and like I was, so. you know, friends with all people who were just as broke as me then, so we yeah, didn't really yeah, go yeah. anywhere. <laughs> There's no Montauk back But there you do no start Montauk. learning, like we were saying that earlier, like mm-hmm. it's exciting for you now, because when you start doing something the second time, mm-hmm. I feel that's when you really start loving the city. Yeah. You know, when it comes around, you're just like, I oh, remember last 4th of July. Mm-hmm. What did we do? And then we do that again or we mm-hmm. do something again. So I booked to go out to Montauk actually for this 4th of July. Yeah, it is smart to start booking early yeah. to do stuff. I do actually have some stuff booked. I'm just not telling Michael in case he has stuff <laughs> planned. I'm actually going to Nantucket on one of them as oh, well. Nice. But that's something I would recommend you if you do that now, book that now. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't realize you can fly into Nantucket and it's so easy to do. Yeah. I mean, and it's not that expensive if you book now. Mm-hmm. Like you can get a one way, like you probably get a return for less than 300. Okay. Or in around 300 or something like that. Now there so is so much easier than There's tickets. a ferry down here, just as it's a tourist tip for people. There's a ferry down here on 34th Street from here. And you can take that ferry to Martha's Vineyard or no into Nantucket. Um, so why wouldn't you do that? I'll tell you why. It does get very sick on that boat. Because you get out into the open sea when you get past Block Island. So oh. I booked it and people were like, oh, open seas. And I was like, why do, you, why do people keep saying this to me? Two separate. Nobody said this to me before I booked it. So me and Olivia get on and thinking nothing of it. No big deal. It's going lovely. It's going great. 
you could see when we get out past sort of like Block Island, parallel to say um, New London, no, probably more Newport. Mm. And I mean, guys, it started rocking and it was bad. People were sick. Everyone was sick. Really? Really, everyone was sick on it. Everyone barred it. You're, guys a, bit, you're a bit soft anyway, Johnny, aren't you? When I say everyone, everyone barred me, Michael, obviously. <laughs> Genuinely, I walked and went out onto the roof. So. I went out onto the top deck, so that was what I mean, and it actually wasn't that bad, but I mean, the, the smell and everything. Oh, God. But I asked another guy here in a regular in the bar who did it a few months later, and I asked him how bad it was, and he said it was horrendous as well. So whether it's just a couple of Irish lads just not able for it's it. like the boat from Galway to the Iron Islands. Right, yeah, I've heard <laughs> him. But this... But, Taking all that aside, I would recommend it still to do it. It's brilliant, and you could tie it all in. Mm. Now, I would recommend if you're doing it, do it on a, on a long weekend, i.e. Mm. 4th of July or Labour, because value-wise, it leaves here on a Friday evening at 2 o'clock. It takes about five hours to get to Martha's Vineyard, mm. even more. I don't think you get to Martha's Vineyard until about 9 o'clock, and then you leave, like the you leave at about 3 or 4 o'clock on Sunday. Yeah. So you're not really getting a whole lot. But if you do it for the long weekend, and you can book it through... Uh, Sea Streak and they take care of the accommodation and everything. Oh, unreal. But I would totally recommend Martha's Vineyard is amazing. Okay. And then I'm trying to untuck it this year. I'll come back to you and let you know how that is. Oh, nice. <laughs> There's so many nice summer places you can oh, go, isn't there? I learned a lesson the hard way. Again, when you're first living here, I remember yeah. typical paddies, we were like, geez, our land that was only a hundred and something to go down. Middle of July, we were down in Florida. <laughs> so we were like, this is great crack. Why wouldn't everybody be down here? So we got born to a crisp. <laughs> There was a storm every day at 3 or 4 o'clock. So it took me a lot of years to work out, hence the reason everyone goes north in the yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so last year I did Portland, Maine and all them places. So oh, this year nice. I plan on doing New Hampshire and stuff like that. There'll be no work done this year. Do you have extra work now with the bear? Yeah. <laughs> um, what was it going? I wanted to bring it back to fashion. <laughs> you do that. You'd never guess by your shorts. Because so, I know people will be watching just like, women obviously but what, how would you describe your own fashion style what I, I might have been struck here by did you see uh, Louise's necklace I did I noticed that earlier on I thought yeah. she was too young for it to be honest it's, um, that's a that's a flat it's a, a twenty from my sisters from, for Christmas it's a 20p oh, isn't it mm. 20 pence coin it's the old yeah. 20 pence yeah. coin 20p on this side I think that's a pound then on the other side is it no, no, well, that was the other side of it. That's the harp sign. Is it 1988? <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm too young for it. Is it 88? Yeah. It says 98, yeah. What year was the, the, the Euro? 2000? 2002, Two, I think. 2002, yeah. I was living here. Yeah. That's when I knew America was the place to live. I know you want to go into fashion, but I had a car loan at home that I owed on a car loan. So you did a runner. Genuinely, I owed 3000 on it. Right, so let's say three thousand in dollars in U.S. dollars, whatever the conversion was at the time. I owed, and it was nearly double, so I probably owed about five thousand. I made that in one week as a bartender in Times Square on Paddy's Week, and a four days so I made and I paid off the car in nice. four days. Oh so God, unless I'd any, if I'd ever any doubt about where I was going to live here or not, yeah. uh, that was that <laughs> was done yeah. right there. Oh my God! I don't know how much my co-workers made. They didn't make a whole lot, but that's how much I stole anyway. Nice. Did you know then that you wanted to stay here? You were here. That was it then. I think that was it. Like for me, I just thought, similar to Louise, what she mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, I think the people you meet here, and like I don't mind saying, like I would have been illegal at the time, and a lot of people were illegal. We all mm-hmm. kind of come over, mm-hmm. and nobody, you could be in a bar full of people, and the majority of people in it would be illegal. Mm-hmm. Whereas today, you very find it very hard no. to find anyone illegal. Yeah. And, and rightfully so, like your generation, it wouldn't be an option. Mm-mm. Like you said it earlier on there. And you said how, fa- how hard you found it to leave after the two years. Mm-hmm. But credit to you for leaving. Whereas I know if that had been back when I was here, I came here in 2001. Well, see, I had a job that I had to go back to. So yeah. it was different. If you loved the life so much here yeah. and you were doing really well, making so much more money, I can understand why yeah. people would want to stay. You know. But I've seen people do that. And it was more because everyone around you was doing it. Yeah. So there would have been people saying to you, why are you going? What are you church? What difference made? We're all in the same boat. Yeah. It was stupid advice. And we all did it. And I'd like and then mm-hmm. you're ten years later and you're still illegal, like, mm-hmm. you know. So but yeah, that was it. I knew then. This is your way of telling us that you're still illegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bring in my blue passport tomorrow and put it up there. Which I'm very proud of. I don't even go home with the Irish and the American one. I just do the American one and gladly get in that American line. Yeah. Do you see yourself here in ten years? I don't know. I really don't know. Like, I'm, I don't feel settled still. Like, I mean, Cooper has helped, um, yeah. you know, make me feel settled. But I suppose working for yourself, working by myself, it's like a whole new market for me. So it's a lot of grafting. It's, you know, it's it's hard. My life was definitely easier at home. Um, 
but I, I feel like when things start falling into place and they have, some things have and I think it's just going to take time yeah you know because um, it's it it's a it's we all know it's it's t- it's tough to do here and you're yeah. and especially like I came out did you come on your own Johnny I came out with Laura my wife you're here on your own it's yeah. Yeah. it's tough and it can be it can be a lonely place mm. in New York yeah I think once I have like more of a network and I'm always meeting people you know but yeah. I suppose I have my family at home and I have like my best friends for years and stuff so I don't know I think time will pass. five years as I always joke is kind of the cut off you think yeah when you're here four or five years I think you start asking yourself well okay I gotta make decision here am I coming or going here? yeah you know that's a good well, I gauge. have a three-year visa so yeah, I guess I will go. know by then you know yeah. but it's such a huge investment to come over Sure it is. Um, so I just really want to give it like the best shot I can and see yeah. how it goes, yeah. you know. But as you say, the seasons are coming around so quick now. Mm. You're excited now. The summer's coming yeah. back into it again. The new wardrobe's out. The summer mm-hmm. wardrobe's out. So you're going to get really excited. Like I just yeah. think the summer in New York is amazing. Yeah, I, I just, know it is. I absolutely love it. I just can't beat it. Yeah. So then when that goes around again, your three years won't be long coming around. Like mm. I know. I can't even, like, it's going to be like six months that I'm here. And, you know, yeah. It's mad. But... Where do you, it's Laura said to me, where do you keep all your clothes? <laughs> oh my God, I know. Anywhere. I have some of them in the kitchen presses. I have two closets. <laughs> the kitchen press. I swear, anywhere at all. I have like, I got my new bed. I have more storage underneath there. Yeah, I got a rail. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun if I decide to move. Out. I know it's people crazy. that live in your building and they're envious of all the posts you get every day. Oh, really? Yeah. Just going down. There's lots of boxes downstairs. Oh, the, the There's boxes there every day. No way. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, Alan would love that I'm saying that. She <laughs> loved that I'm saying that. But she does. She loves because she loves it. And she says to me, she says, "Loads of boxes down there, Johnny, all the time." I so just funny. take them. Louise wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> so she wouldn't mind. Just, yeah. just borrowed them for the week. The way you she did off H H&M. and in Ireland, like well, it was my full time job. I'm packing boxes. Really? And like you couldn't complain about it, you know. But like well, I wasn't getting paid to store all this stuff that I was being sent and or. You I'm know, sure your sisters, it, like. your sisters would have been happy to take advantage oh, of yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Fly them over, fill up the suitcase. Who needs to go to Woodbury Common? I know, any time anyone Street. comes in, I'm like, take stuff. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is, the, is the fashion here a lot different than it is at home? How would you compare them? Um, yeah, it is, but I think because it's been quite mild here, you haven't really seen that much of a difference this year. Because like this is kind of nearly like yeah. Irish weather, isn't it? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's the mildest winter it's I can right. remember. Yeah, I remember... Like when I was here five years ago, it's definitely more about practicality here when it gets really cold. Mm. You don't really have that at home. You still wear your, even though it's cold and raining, yeah. you'll still wear like your nice coat and your boots and, you know. But even I find going out, if you're socialising, you're going to the pub at home, people, oh. like I'm from Cork and it's a big thing going into town. The women are up, the Dressed heels up, and the tan yeah. is on. You, co- you come into a bar, any bar here and it's, you know, it's, it's casual. Like it's oh, a good, it's very it's, casual. Yeah, you feel dressed up wearing like yeah. anything, you know. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Or do you kind of like, do you, do you like the, the, the relaxed attitude or would you prefer to be getting up? Oh no, it's, it's great. Yeah. And it makes life very easy, you know. <laughs> do you but find it hard to keep on top of um, fashion in general? Like you're, you're always in the... You need always, yeah, I have to be showing new things six, and showing what's six. new. And yeah, I mean, I do have like a, lot, a good few bits in my wardrobe that I'll kind of rewear and mix and match with different things. But I suppose people want to see what's in the shops now, what they can buy. So, yeah, yeah that's is kind of part of my job. So my friends get a lot of, you know, wear out of my clothes. As well. Yeah. Is there, any, is, is there anything you can do for Johnny with his fashion? <laughs> Have a look at that top there now. <laughs> I had to ask this. This is the page. Well, who's got the better? Fa- who, who's if you want to see the best the, fa- fashion sense? If you want to see the bottoms. Well, keep in mind now, I have a real job and Michael doesn't, <laughs> right? I'm trying to open another bar and I was running here when he was late. Did he? What time did he text you to tell you he'd be here, by the way? That, oh, I, I think they, they, they say that's deflecting, is it, in politics? <laughs> 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 have you seen the bottoms he had on to match that paisley top? He's got zips on his pockets. It's like David Bowie here. <laughs> that's not bad. From the top of. And we can't even mention hair anyway, but move on. Who's got the better hair? <laughs> Mine's real. We're all rocking the buns today. <laughs> buns are very in. <laughs> Do you grow your hair just because other Irish lads are bald? That's why I did it. Yeah. I have two brothers that are bald, and I love that I have long hair just to really piss them off. Really? Two yeah. brothers who are bald? That's two so of them funny. are bald, so he grew it, and he I grew love it, it just to know that my other brothers, <laughs> we all have good heads of hair, so it's just great. Even my dad does. That's so and funny. And the other two, you can tell, are just ripping. That's why they have facial hair. <laughs> that is so funny. What do you like about New York, and what do you not like? I, I'm not going to say hate in this day and age, but there's mm. what, do you, what, what do you love about it, what do you hate? Mm. 
I love like the that there's always something to do. There's like literally always something happening. Um, I love the weather here. I love being able to like walk around, and most of the time it's blue skies. Like I was on the phone with my mom today, and she said oh, it's raining, it's hurricane, it's storm, whatever today, you know. And that like it really does affect your mood. I found that very hard when I moved home the first time. Was getting used to the weather again. It's depressing at home. Oh my god. Yeah, especially if you like, if you like being out and about and walking, yeah. and, like you just can't. Everyone sits in their car at home, you know. A hundred percent. It's a humor enhancer here. Like, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. And obviously, we're having a really mild winter, but mm. even in general, it can be just sort of crisp anyway. Even when mm. it is cold, the sun does shine a lot. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. But it's in like the summer, like if you're in bad form in the summer, like geez, there's something wrong with you. Like. Yeah. But even in the winter, there's the fresh air. Yeah. Was it Sunday? You were out and about, and you took. Mm. S- beautiful photos and Sunday was just it was just mild it was just it felt like summer even though I mean yeah. Yeah. Christ, it was just some day it was mm. just like it was kind of breathing and then if you compare it to home like it's dull and dreary or whatever and it does have a mm-hmm. it has an effect mentally on people at home for totally sure totally it does yeah. yeah there is that envious thing that we'd all agree then when it, the summer does come around at home and the long evenings oh the long evenings are the best like I Shame on me. I came here when I was 18, first time, and I was like a half eight at night. I went, what just happened there? I know. I just assumed everyone had long evenings. I, I know. was like so shocked. I shock. actually forgot until you said that, yeah. People ask me all right the time, 11 o'clock and they're night. expecting me to say your parents. My parents wouldn't mind me saying this. Mm. When I'm asked what I missed about home, I just said a chipper oh, yeah. and the long evenings. I agree with you. The you know when you get a things. really sunny day at home, though, and people yeah. start, you know, they have a few day drinks and yeah. you're sitting out literally until 11 o'clock yeah. at night. We definitely embrace it better at home yeah. mm. because we know it's rare. Like mm. the way we talk about the weather there, and I think that's why the three of us are saying, and all Irish here, do love the summer so much because we mm-hmm. don't actually take them for granted. No. Yeah. So when you it's do get at home, straight sunlight. to a beer garden at home. Oh, listen. <laughs> it's just I like saw no sun last summer. Off. Yeah. Literally, but it was the year before we had a heat wave, but last year there was, it yeah. wasn't the best summer at home. Of course, home, so you like. came after the summer, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. I've been waiting two years for this thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. The long evenings, beer garden, like mm. yeah. large bottle of Bulmers. It's Even if you don't like it, you'll still drink it. If it's half day mm. from work. Might take the following morning off. Yeah. It's just the, mm. the thing stops. Everyone's out the door. It's, yeah, that's that's one good thing about Yeah. Home, How do you so. plan your trips at home in the summer? Now, will you purposely, when every trip you do, say when you're going home, mm-hmm. is there a, a work purpose a lot of time behind it? Um, you know, like a, a renewal of visa or going home for anything work-wise? What weddings, is it? Weddings, a lot of weddings. I'll have weddings, to plan you're at that age, yeah. yeah. So you should be illegal. I was illegal through the whole 20s and all my mates got married. I didn't have to go to anything. <laughs> and now they're all miserable. Oh, and it's they're very getting expensive, divorced, isn't it? And I'm up a couple of hundred. Oh, it's a great result. That's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> it no. is true, but you're at that age, you know, mm. and if you go to one, you're bunched. You can't. You have to go to yeah. them all. Yeah, we'll like see how we go. I mean, this is my first year, so yeah. I have, yeah, a couple of weddings coming up, but we do love it. Like, well, when did the wedding become a two or three day thing at home? Like, it's ne- the day after is nearly more important than the wedding, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, the day after. The is day after is like, and you're getting judged on it. Like, is it? Did you hear your man didn't get a barbecue for tomorrow? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So Need to pay for our own food. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're putting 21 quid in the car, like thinking it's your 21st. Like. So funny. Uh, Irish weddings are just second to none. Here, to here they're kind of like a yeah, non-event. Yeah, I don't know. You see, I, I don't know where I'd fall down on that now. Like, Irish weddings are phenomenal. Like, I'm saying the two day thing in three days, but they're just they're brilliant. Like, yeah. They yeah, really are. They're good fun. Whereas here, here it's really good to be invited to one where you're not really that invested into it. As in a home, if you're invited to one at home, like I'm just saying, if you're invited to one at home and you don't really know them, if it's Laura's friends or something, it must be horrible. You're basically doing two days with something that you Mm. really don't want to be at. The American wedding is great for that. If you're not really majorly invested into it, it can be wham, bam, and it's done. Mm. But it's more the venues that people use. The venues throw you out, like, especially in New York. What time do they end at here? Well, it's nearly impossible to get a bar extension in them in any of the venues so we've actually had a lot of after parties here at the bar for that reason yeah, Irish will get the bus I always find that funny like how much more casual it almost is here yeah. in comparison to at home like. the picture we're painting everything is really casual here we're making it sound like everyone dresses like a jippo <laughs> and at weddings are total. but it is true they are sort of casual but do you not think mm-hmm. at home it's a little extortion then as well oh, yeah, it like is, yeah. the the expectation to live up to your friends and the I other feel like it's almost old fashioned like yeah. in a way I don't know I just feel like we don't live in a world anymore where people look forward to one day for for a couple of years. Now yeah. everything's much more like instant now. Or, yeah. You know. I met an Irish couple here during the, uh, literally at Christmas time. I was hanging the decorations and I looked at them and they were in the wedding dress and him and her like, but I couldn't not ask. And I was like, well, what, 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 where were you? 
and they were like City Hall. Oh, Flew nice. over from home, just the two of them. Photographer was the witness. But I asked them, what was their main reason for doing it? Mm-hmm. And I, whether they were joking or not, one of their first answers was watching their other friends get married at home, turned them off doing it. Because mm. they were so under pressure. Genuinely on the day, her words was the face of both of the brides turned really? me off getting married at home. And I could see, I could see it because I've seen it at home. I've seen it's just so much pressure. Just the work the, that goes yeah. into this one day and the money and the... It's the money know. part I don't get. I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't get like the expense that people mm. put on themselves. Maybe I'm just being cynical for it because I did City Hall and I was sitting at home watching Blade and spin the wheel 10 minutes later <laughs> or something like that. But it's just, all, all joking aside, I don't, I, I can't understand the money aspect mm. that people like... So what if you don't have a day after? So what if you don't have a big yeah, thing to it? Like, you know? look, yeah. And then you, you spend like, what's an average wedding at home? 20, 30,000 or something? More, more, more. More? There you go, I have no clue. I would clue. think, I don't actually know for that's meant, but... <laughs> like, and then the same person would be struggling. Like 50, yeah. And the same oh, person is yeah. then struggling to get a mortgage yeah. then after that then. Yeah. yeah. And, for, now I've, and I've never met anyone afterwards, like within the year after that one of the two couple, if the other one's not mm. around, will go to you. Fucking disaster. <laughs> 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 Yeah. We'll ask you another time, Michael. We know you did it. Well, but Laura did everything for me. But another thing I love about here, anyway, we were talking about what we love about here. I love open-mindedness of people. Everybody's so, like, anything can happen, you know? And yeah. People really go after what they want, and people don't really judge you for what you want to do or what you... Like, if you say something, people are like, okay, cool, yeah. you know, go people, for it, do yeah. it, you know? 100%. Yeah. People are out here, here to achieve something, make something mm-hmm. of their lives. Like, it's what you were saying previous podcast, Johnny, you see no one downstairs on the, yeah. on the door. Yeah, I've always this thing that I was joking, say, you won't have to listen to the opinion of somebody on the dole mm. in New York. There's nobody on the dole in New York. There's no Irish person on the dole in New York. Yeah. So the long story short, the, 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 the joke I'd make is, like, if you're sitting in a pub at home, like mm-hmm. you are going to have to listen to the opinion of one of the guys or girls you went to school with who's on the dole who doesn't really and every time you say well mm-hmm. I'm going to go open my own bar I'm going to start my own fashion brand and I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't do that now if it was you I'm mm-hmm. not that in the head whereas as you say you say anything here in front of someone else mm-hmm. nine times out of ten they're like absolutely go mm-hmm. for it I'm going to try to do something similar yeah uh, and I, it's all about like networking here as well it's kind of like how can I help you or how can I yeah how could we work together on this or, absolutely you know, do you find a difference between here and home in, in that sense in about people people backing you up the positivity positivity like like you as a blogger that you had Jenny kind of the begrudgery that that word uh, yeah. that I think it, <laughs> that's the word like that's one of the reasons kind of we decided to come here there's a big kind of there's a bit of that at home in Ireland and here you're just like you're out here mm. and people are supporting you you're going to do something everyone is like yeah but I have found like since I've moved and my following is you know it's mainly Irish I've gotten so much positive messages from people. No, like very little begrudgery, just people like really yeah. excited for me and kind of proud of me for moving, which is really nice, you know, yeah, to that's see. Great. Yeah. That's great to hear that. And like they see like how hard I work and they know it's not, oh, most yeah, because of the time people the begrudgery we're talking easy, about and you know? the guy in the dawn, the, it's a s- fraction of the people. Yeah. Because people at home, the support even with us open this bar and trying to open the other yeah, place. I think people at home are just amazing when, about it. When they're at home and you're, they're looking at people away from home. I think yeah. they're, we, like, we are like pr- proud of yeah. Absolutely. people abroad. Are, and we're pulling, yeah. we're pulling each other together over here. Like, you yeah. know, it's either kind of... The Irish community here is it's like oh, it's huge, great. isn't it? Yeah, yeah no, it's massive. Yeah. It really is. You could, like you said it there, if you, like, if you ask somebody for anything, even into your field, I know from building here even the amount of Irish lads that come in and did work for us and mm-hmm. like as regards payment and stuff they'll be like yeah yeah you'll get it to me and I'm not just saying that for the sake of the podcast mm-hmm. they really would like mm-hmm. they'd be like yeah don't worry you'll get it to me just mm-hmm. pay for the labour and pay for the cost of the stuff and when you get going like mm-hmm. you know and that's still going on today mm-hmm. there's lads still doing that for the each Irish other the Irish really have like taken over like construction and yeah. bars and everything like even my uncles they moved here god 25 years ago and they're up in Connecticut and they own a bar and they're in construction and yeah it's funny, like, isn't it? It is, yeah. It kind of was the classic construction thing years ago, you see. It's changing a lot now because there's not so much cash anymore. Mm-hmm. But it is. But, like, how much work must your uncles have done there when you think about it? To be oh, putting yeah. in that level of work yeah, yeah, to yeah. be doing construction and to be doing bars and still doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't think you know any different here. Like, it's like Michael there today, now in fairness, running around to get here. Mm-hmm. You were doing the same. I was doing the same. But I'm not, just get on with it. Like, mm-hmm. it's not, I do think sometimes what we could do we're pulling ourselves in sometimes I think we do it too much mm. 
And when you go home and you see like lads, you know, under nine to five, like I had a friend here only recently and he was talking about his company trying to transfer him over and he was asking me my advice. And the jig's in the rail by the end of it. I was like, you have three kids. I said, what time do you get home? At? And he says, oh, I'd normally be home at 3.34. You know, and I'd be oh there. Oh, my God. And what I, do you do? And I was like, be home. And I said, okay, so you leave early. He said, no, I dropped him to school. Like, he's an engineer, but he drops him to school. But I, he was contemplating coming here. Like, mm. they want to transfer him here for a year. I said, believe me, I know from friends of mine that work in SAP here. I said, that's not going to happen. You're going to get here. And he said, if he does get here, he will be traveling a lot. Mm. So I said, yeah, your wife's going to be in a house a lot on her own with three kids. Mm. Whereas I do think we probably do all just follow, like, what I'm trying to say is we probably all do work a bit too hard mm. here. Um, yeah. Everyone's doing it. So you're like, just, Asher, get on with it. We're all doing yeah. it. Yeah. You could do it, like, reeling it in sometimes. I think that's one of the things I've found hard since I moved, because I work for myself, and because I suppose my network is smaller here than it is at home, I'm constantly working, but I'm working a lot by myself. Right. And it's hard, like, it's, you know, I feel like the more I make connections, it'll get easier, but... Yeah. Probably do it in a a shared workspace or something, like, you know. Just to get yourself out, Mm. yeah. And did you have, did you have, um, what did you have set up before you came over here? Was it more... Well, see, because I was at home and I was getting invited to everything, I was out every day meeting people, you know. And I also yeah. had roommates, so it was different. Okay. Yeah. But that's something I'm considering. That's one lesson I think I've learned. I don't know if I love living by myself. Yeah. So I think I might get roommates next year. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I w- I, I'd be the same, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't. I've always had roommates, even before me and Olivia lived together. I always had. I think it's a, mentally it's just a good thing to yeah. have somebody there, you know, even just... Especially you, you've you know you grew up in a house with mm-hmm. a few people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, as I did too, like two bleeding many. But mm-hmm. you know, that's that was something I said the other night to a couple of girls. We were chatting downstairs, customers, and we were talking actually about this podcast mm-hmm. and when we the other day we were trying to do it. But I was even asking them. I said, like, did you ever have your own room until you left home? Like some people are arriving in New mm-hmm. York. It's their first time ever having their own room. All these little things were intimidating. Like. I mean, you're, you're like, I always say to your brother or sister, like, like I grew up in a house with six boys, like, mm-hmm. I shared a room, like, I never had my own room until mm-hmm. I left home. Yeah. But that in itself was intimidating. It wasn't yeah, and actually. already being away from home and, yeah. It all, all is factors in. So I would definitely recommend to a lot of people, roommates are good to have, like, yeah. just to know there's someone there, even when they're not there, you know they're coming home or they're it's going true. to be, yeah. I suppose it's, it's different when you're moving over. Like, I didn't really know, like, anyone yeah. I could have moved in with, you know, that kind of way. So, but now I'll be in a situation where I will know people and, yeah. You know. It's amazing how excited people come in when they come in and they see a grocery there. Oh, really? Oh, it's just unreal. I think it's great. Like, it's a great gimmick for us, like, but it's funny. But I get when I'm people... i pick up some weed if it's on my way yeah. out, <laughs> <laughs> Just check the date on them there before you do that. No? <laughs> <laughs> some of them are up there for show. I seen a woman going out one day with the crackers in her hand, and I was like, oh, she's definitely coming back with them. <laughs> 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 so funny. Did you did, did you have an apartment set up? Because when we came here, we had n- <laughs> we did our space. Mm. We had nothing set up. We were booking the f- we were booking the hotel to stay in the following night and the train up and on the Sunday and arriving on the Monday. So you arrived, but sorry, you and Laura arrived to New York with no one to stay with, and you were staying booking a hotel to stay with in New York. Yeah. And what was your plan like for no- week two? The plan was just to try and find something as soon as possible. We stayed in a hotel for a w- two two or three different hotels for a week. Just, that was brave, man. And this is about Louise's podcast. <laughs> uh, no, no. But this is what I did, yeah. It's but a this New York but podcast. But they're, they're yeah. like, realistically, that's but the options when you're moving, yeah. when you have stuff and you... Yeah. So I had, like, I moved over, had a couple of cases, and I had boxes coming. And yeah. Like, I could have stayed in a hotel if I didn't find the right place. But how, how did you have an apartment set up? Um, I had my friend view it for me, like, a week oh, before. Because right, everything okay. moved so quickly here. Yeah. And then I moved in. Oh, but, like, getting the deposit sword, getting the car... Everything was last minute. Yeah. I just got lucky that I... Moved in three days after I got here. Well, Jeez. I did have to pay for like like a night or two in a hotel. Yeah. Because um, it's so difficult because like everything, it's set up. We need your last couple of bills. We mm-hmm. need utility bills. We need all this. Yeah. And you need like, if you don't have credit, you need You need stuff that you don't actually have. Yeah. Pay them. yeah. <laughs> there are some yeah. stuff that you possibly can't have. Mm-hmm. And obviously you didn't want to go staying in Connecticut. No. Well, just with all my stuff, it would have been just, a lot. Yeah. And then it probably would have taken me ages to get sorted with, yeah. you know, coming up and down. So... Yeah, that yeah. could make it very difficult too. Because sometimes that's like you and Laura came and stayed in. Where'd you stay in the city? Well, we, what we did, we came on the Sunday. We stayed in the city for like a couple of days, two or three different hotels for a week, and we couldn't find anything. We were on Craigslist in the hotel. We were up in Jamaica at one stage, and um, on Craigslist, and they were like, "Yeah, if you just send us the cash, we'll send you the 
the keys mm-hmm. to the apartment <laughs> in the post and they were sending us driver's licenses and I was like fuck this, yeah. this is definitely a scam mm-hmm. so we were waiting waiting and it was one of the first apartments we saw in Sunnyside that we kind of disregarded at the start and then we ended up going back to that but the second week then Laura had a friend out in Jersey and uh, she's the same age as us 25, 24 and <laughs> in the 90s <laughs> mid 30s and uh, they had a young kid and the mm-hmm. kid's only like uh, two years old and she was like come over I look after you and she's she was there every morning she, she'd, have the, she'd have the breakfast made in the morning for us and, the, and she was washing the clothes for a week there again back she to was the Irish thing there mm-hmm. she's a two year old in the house yeah. and she's like no problem she was over. like I look after you no bother just like yeah. having her own our you don't own know what it's here. like when you yeah, meet and she, yeah. friends and so they took me for lunch and everything and just they try and help as much as they can when yeah. you get here you know so my friend actually viewed the apartment for me yeah. which helped a lot because then I was just ready to go and I could, you know, I had somewhere to send all my stuff and yeah, yeah, Jeez, yeah just hit the ground running like, you know. Because even you need, like, we were even looking at new, a new place there and you're like, you need receipts and pay slips and all that and the year I had there it was, it was all over the shop and you're like, how proving all this? Like, mm. it's, geez, so I, I was just... It's all ahead of both of you but, and, and just by what you, I assume you haven't done it. When you move, it's one thing you'll leave in. It, you'll dread it. You'll regret it in one way it's horrible mm. moving in this town is it moving just apartment a, is it just moving apartment is a nightmare it's a day job like isn't it it's, it's just it's just a nightmare now mm. but it's all for it's, it's for the right reasons like if you move in with other people it's going to be great mm-hmm. and all but the act but even the expense of moving yeah because to hold the deposit mm. you know next thing the next guy wants two months up front mm-hmm. depends how you get the apartment yeah. you're going to pay a broker you're going to pay like it's extortion like yeah. the whole thing yeah. yeah and then the minute you do it you obviously that's it I'm never doing that again mm two three years later you're doing it again yeah but not not obviously it's the long haul podcast and we're in the long haul but this this place is a was this place a good com- a great comfort for you with the yeah no it's nice like a taste at home like you know yeah you kind of get to know everyone who works here and it's nice to see like friendly faces yeah. and it's actually a very hot spot everyone's always here so i agree. feel like you're in a in a bar in dublin well it's funny you said that when i was saying earlier on about the friday nights in the summer being like you know everyone leaves manhattan for some reason we're always really busy it just shows that none of us are going to the hamptons or going to church because we'd be that's we'd be full with all that your generation of Mm -hmm. irish it's just all the younger Mm -hmm. but it is great that it has that like you could and i know a female not so much like but what i always said about new york i love for the female aspect a female could walk into a bar in new york on her own Mm -hmm. and it's not she's not going to feel under threat uncomfortable no, or yeah. any way and nobody's thinking any different and the bartender mm-hmm. wouldn't even think any different of it he'd be like yeah. oh there's Louise there's Lord Hoods wherever you know yeah. but the great thing about here is there's a very good chance you're going to meet someone anyway mm-hmm. that you're going to know and that yeah, is exactly, yeah. for a city with 10 or 11 million people in it mm-hmm. it's great that we that that has kind of it's just evolved like that here yeah. mm-hmm. but it is probably a bit too close to home for you But when, when Louise came here and uh, you were tagging the long haul just getting that back back to the social media the power of social media oh, you saw your social media blew up it's massive like in the, we were here four years and I can actually trace it back each thing was a gent different and between like in reverse like in the reverse order like Louise and the girls like it, it, and then Connor Connor Moore yeah. before, previous to that and then even Shane Lowry before that and like then the likes of Tomas and mm-hmm. the lads in the GA at the start but all four of them things like it was just amazing just yeah. But mm. I like the hand and heart, like as I joked here earlier on, like I was like every other fella. What's a bleeding blogger? Yeah. What are you bleeding on about? I get people sending me pictures from here. They're like, oh, yeah. we're here. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, so give good. me one night off. It's so funny. <laughs> but I definitely seen the difference. But That's crazy. The, yeah. gauge, the gauge is always ask the bartender. Always ask the bar. So if I ask the lads downstairs and I'll ask them. So I asked Chris and Paul. And I think it was the night when Dervler was over, mm. our mutual friend. Like, so mm. Dervler was here and... Uh, yourself Michaela and Dervil and that were down the back and the girls all came in together and they were there and we were really busy that night but I asked Chris that night I says, I says do you see much of it there and Chris was said the influx of young females yeah. young females which is fascinating like because you think okay a lot of girls going to be a lot of guys but as you say it's a lot of girls that are following you more so now and young I see mm. the young ones at home so I can see it from my Instagram when you have to been here really that's so funny so that night you were here the next morning I was a hundred plus extra followers just on the long haul, right? Oh my God. Nearly not one male. <laughs> True story. Nearly yeah, not one male. Yeah, 90% of my followers are yeah. female. So that's, that's unbelievable. That. But it is great, like, that they, you know, mm. and they look yeah. at it and they're like, and for us, grateful, thank you. It's mm-hmm. great because 
We see them when they're over here. I seen it's you. No charging that weed no, no. on the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the don't mind the date. When it says two oh eight, that's not July or uh, that's not <laughs> yeah. the second of August. It's, it's backwards here on the stage. But I seen you here one night with young girls, and yeah, you, they took a picture with you or mm-hmm. something. They put it up, but they were on holidays here. They were on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So there you go. Like yeah. they're coming over, but then for me in the weird end, I'm getting random women texting me on Instagram that would have lived here and that I knew over the years. And then I was like doing the typical guy thing. I was like, really? Shane Lowry was in here. You want an open? And you're <laughs> texting me about the girls been in the bleeding place. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> but this would be the crack with them, you know? But I, I yeah. think it's brilliant. I think it's fascinating. But same, I'm fascinated by it, but at the same time, I think mm-hmm. social media for the bars is, it's amazing. And it, yeah. Uh, yeah, like the blogging thing, and it does. It's it, great. Uh, it's like free marketing. And it's know. brilliant. Mm. Like Instagram is the best thing that's ever happened to mm-hmm. the bar industry, more so than Facebook or any of them. Yeah. Because the story, it's, it's all yeah. the story. I always watch as well. Like, yeah. I don't follow many bars now, but like the ones that I would go yeah. to, I'll always watch. I'm like, oh, yeah. what's going on? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've seen it here when, sorry, when you used to be here, I've seen it on nights. Mm. And I could see even post. Like when Limerick were here that time, mm-hmm. when the Limerick team were here, mm-hmm. they were great. Like they were brilliant. But on the Sunday night, it was a Sunday night, the lads came back and they were just had the place to themselves and it was amazing. But when the lads were tagging in it, I'd seen more and more people coming here at like 1.32 in the morning on a Sunday night. Mm-hmm. They're not coming this direction. They're not. Sunday night is like anywhere in the world. It's pretty yeah. quiet anywhere. Mm-hmm. And a guy said it to me and he come, came through the door. I says, oh, this is the only show in town tonight. He says, we've seen it on Instagram. Mm. And I saw when um, Hosier was here, I saw it the oh, next yeah. day on the story. I was like, damn, yeah. I wish I saw it would have come over. Like, he, you know? he didn't tell you he was coming in? <laughs> no. Jeez. Well, Hosier <laughs> came in. You see, Hosier came in on the... the Friday or Saturday, Do you know wasn't it? to get in here? Darren McKennedy. Well, you know where he's from, right? Dublin somewhere? Raccoon. Oh, okay. Where I'm from. Did you see him oh. recently? And, I, and my name is Kennedy as well. So I get, I have got random texts, oh. like, are you related to him? And I always don't go too Just high. Just message him and say, I'm your uncle. No, but I don't go, long lost I don't go too high. I always go, yeah, he's my second cousin. Don't make it too obvious. And then go, we don't really know each other. I'm out here years. It's way more believable. Like. <laughs> it is mm. And then one fella said it to me, he goes, oh, and I said, look, there's nothing I can really do. And she said, ah, no, it's just my sister's really into him. And she's like, she'd love to meet him sometime. I said, do you know, to be honest with you, I haven't seen him since a kid. <laughs> just so leave it funny. at that. <laughs> yeah. Did you see him? What was, was yeah, he was very impressive. That mm-hmm. night we were in Brooklyn that I was telling everyone not to be on Instagram. Are you and then see I got on. Again? Yeah, he was amazing. Now, that was, I didn't, I hadn't heard much about, I just heard this hype about him. My mm-hmm. brother actually did go to school with him. They okay. knew each other through football and stuff. And my brother was going on about him to me years mm-hmm. ago. Like, even when he was busking, like, that time he was like, oh, this kid is great. His and voice it, is unreal. Oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that night in Brooklyn, like, the venue, first off, mm-hmm. was just off the charts. That venue mm-hmm. was amazing. Did you go to him the last time? Yeah. Yeah, my friend works with him, so. Oh, wow. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, then it's your job to get him here. I know. I'll yeah. See. Just see say what I can do. It's I'll, the me- I'll new, actually say it to It's the right. hardest well, new no, podcast you should just tone. say to him, you know your uncle has a bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh his God. auntie was the, is the lady that used to be on Nationwide that just recently retired. Mary Kennedy. Mary Kennedy oh his auntie. Oh, my God, no way. Yeah, that's his auntie. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's loved in Ireland. Oh, she's amazing. I love yeah. her. She, she's really good. Yeah. But Hosier was great now. I had to just to finish on it. I thought he was a, one of the nicest people I've ever met. He was just, not just to everybody. How did he end up in here? Honestly, his roadies or the lads that are in the band with him were here last year for a game and they went back his, this is what he was telling me they went back going on about the fries oh the fries are good they went on about the fries yeah. and the Guinness <laughs> so fries, I, and the fries and curry so he said it to me Jeez. I says how did you find it it was him and the guy and he said to be honest with you he said the two lads that are in the band with me they came back and he said we found this place I'm telling you and he said to be honest I was like yeah whatever lads and proved the point he came on the Friday night and didn't know, we didn't know he was coming and he randomly came in whatever the Friday or Saturday night mm. But a good side story was I knew he was coming back on the Tuesday and I purposely didn't tell a whole lot of people because mm. they rented, they just took the back area themselves. But there was a friend of mine who called in here and she started, she came back after the gig that he did on the Saturday night mm-hmm. and was telling me how big a fan as she was. And, and really then I thought like, yeah, you're a fan, but she really is a little but borderline stalker. Mm-hmm. So I let her come in to let on she was a waitress. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> so she hung out for the night and... Um, did many people bother him for pictures? They did a little, but he was good, very good about it. Mm. But it was funny because we pulled a curtain across there at the clock halfway down. Oh, right. And I stood the other side of the clock. And one girl at one stage came running through. I'm not exaggerating. Literally came running through the curtain and like was getting really pissed off at me. And she's like, can I not just go down there? And at this stage, I'm kind of pissed off. It's 1.30 in the morning. And that's why I said to her, 
how do you see this playing out? She's like, well, I said, do you think you're going to go down there? And he's going to say, oh, my God, let's be friends. Like, Aww. I was being a bit short with her. And she's like, and then it turns out she wasn't even drinking or anything, but she was just waiting to see him. And at 4.30 in the morning, 5 in the morning, I have a picture of her and him, like when she's leaving, she eventually, so she waited it out and oh, she eventually hilarious. got her picture. He couldn't have been nicer, but he was actually on the Tommy Tiernan show the night after. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that last week. And Tommy Tiernan always asked people to do that little, do you have a little jingle in you? Do you have a song or something? And yeah. he couldn't even sing it. He says, I'm nothing. And he, he started going on about his, like, his voice and then something. And I was sitting there going, yeah, I did that. Uh, curry fries <laughs> did he fly home the next day he literally flew home that because I was just like why did he even bother getting a hotel room like he left here half five six in the morning yeah. two of the nights he was here oh my god oh yeah that's New York for you oh yeah totally. <laughs> even Hoser can't stick it <laughs> um, we started off that with the, the social media and I just wanted to ask you about um, like does the, pot, does the the good side to it I think it's great or whatever mm-hmm. and like you've nearly 200,000 followers you must mm-hmm. get the odds bad or mm. a slight comment um, yeah. like uh, is this I know you can brush it off but does, people can brush it off easily but does it get to you or how do you ha- ha- um, handle that yeah like it used to get to me more when it was new um, and if people say things that are really wrong then it will but I just thought like I just know now how to react and how to you know yeah. and I just ignore it yeah fair play to you, you know. yeah because like you're 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 the you're in the public face all day yeah. like and but I really I honestly don't get that much like yeah. I don't but there's always be someone there sitting at home and I'm about to trying to you know just to yeah. be difficult just because they yeah. can like yeah. through a screen you know yeah but for the most part like I just don't really yeah. let it bother me I like, take a screenshot laugh about it if it's bad you yeah. know but, yeah. Are you ever struck by your, the amount of followers and the following you have? Is you ever really go, yeah. geez, I'm here in New York often, and like, often like I you, do, and you I'm are like, one of the biggest Irish bloggers? It's crazy, to here. Me. it's yeah. crazy. You know, it's so weird. Like when you think about the numbers, like it's mad. Yeah. But I mean, I'm lucky. I'm re- I feel really lucky that I was able to make a career out of it, um, and I was able to move out here. Like that's very lucky. Not many people yeah. get that opportunity, you know. But I do work really, really hard as well. Yeah. Um, seven days a week I, yeah. I could be wrong but I, I would presume it is and I just it? never would have put myself down as somebody who would be doing something like this because I don't know yeah. I, don't, I don't know I, don't, I just wouldn't I think is, I it would. kind of, is, it, is it like the natural progression now for models and like people have to have like a social media presence yeah but I wasn't well, like I wasn't like a big model I just did it like as yeah. a, almost like a job with college you know during college I, it was never okay. something I wanted to do full time yeah. it was more you know, fashion it was never something I probably could have done full time you know um, yeah. but fashion was always the yeah, always yeah. a thing for me. So, yeah, we'll just see where it goes. There is, there's a couple of different options where you can take take things, but I think as you get older, you start to like think, right, where is this going? You yeah. know. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. It's even tough, like I say, presume like you're a freelancer and you work with all these top brands, but mm-hmm. I suppose they're all like ad hoc. They're like you, you get a mm-hmm. you get a gig, then you have to try oh, and get your, your next hustling. gig. constantly It gets tiring. Like that's why I'm like. Do I want this forever? I just don't. I don't know. You yeah. know, wouldn't that be interesting? But you're you're happy. Who gave up influencing? You're happy. <laughs> I was going. And is this the fam- most famous dog, most famous Irish dog since Roy Keane's? Um, yes. I thought he's the quietest dog ever in the class. My like. most liked photo on Instagram is of him. Just of him. I'm not even not even my hand. Really? That's great. When you when he made it to New York. How hard was it to get him in here? Um, it was. Do you know what the hardest part was just getting the information. So like finding out what you actually need what paperwork you need what shots you need and that everyone will tell you different things so I think it's kind of a matter of who you meet on the day but right. I mean it was straightforward and a few people told me it was straightforward but then I've also heard stories of people being refused at the desk and I'm sure what do you do then when you have a dog with you and you have a flight to catch like you know, know yeah. so I don't know I have to bring him back to Ireland so it'll be interesting to see how I get on with that and does he have to be trained then for the, the apartment building? Oh, yeah, it's interesting. And, oh, <laughs> what? It's, it's an int- interesting. It's a it's a learning it's a learning curve, isn't it, Coop? <laughs> uh, he doesn't like rainy days, so we always have an accident on a rainy day. All right, Jesus. <laughs> but do you know what I've actually come to learn? I think it becomes a part of. You know, when you have a dog, you kind of just brush it off. It's not yeah, like yeah. You, it's never anything bad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's kind of nice to have someone else to worry about and just to get out of bed for and do you know what I mean yeah. I don't mind doing yeah. it but like I used to think oh that would be terrible having to bring him outside four times a day or whatever it just becomes a part of your day and you just get on with that like do you know you have a couple of dogs at home do you uh, one dog just at home oh yeah. I thought I saw a couple on the yeah, no. 
Well, that's yeah, probably when Cooper is. All yeah, right, when Cooper okay. and, and our home dog, yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, okay. do you share him, Cooper, with your roommate? Is that my, my roommate in Dublin, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The so. roommate's waiting for the dog to come back. So, so summer. I, I think it'd be good for him to not be here. It's very hot in the summer, like, you know. Yeah, so it does, yeah. He doesn't do well with heat, so good for him. Do you have someone working for you then here doing your photos or who does who's behind the scenes? Yeah so I have somebody working with me she's Irish as well um, and she'll help me with like videos or photos or blog posts kind of okay. a couple of different things and then um, depending on what kind of photos I want I'll work with a photographer then sometimes as well. All right okay. So it kind of depends yeah it's always different it's always yeah it's interesting trying to figure out. Being an insta hobby myself. Oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I need to get myself one of those. He's the cameraman. Yeah. He's the cameraman behind the scenes. I mean, that's what I was getting at when you were, you were, when you were oh, Cooper coming in. I remember because I don't know, you know, but Laura was stuck at home there for a while and she was in a bit of a like around something to talk about and a bit of bad state mentally when she was home for a while. But she was like going through her, she's in administrative process and he's like, mm. even Louise's dog can get back into the, <laughs> into the stairs. <laughs> She's I like, they'll pick a dog over me. <laughs> and it was just, I, couldn't, I just had to laugh. I was <laughs> Who here. could refuse this face? I was here. <laughs> now, you made a joke there. Maybe I should get one of them Insta hubbies, right? <gasps> Do you get many uh, females asking you as regards trying to meet people in New York? Because it is a very lonely city. Um, Michael hit on it earlier. Yeah. It's not, it's not the easiest place. Mm. You're very lucky now. I see it here. As regards, you have a great network of friends. You, yeah, you yeah. really are very good to each other. Mm. Like to have that. But I know enough myself over the years and meeting mm. girls I would have worked with over the years, like back in the day here was like, again, getting back to the illegal, you were illegal. So you came mm. here, if you were a guy, you went into construction or bartending, mm-hmm. and you were a girl, you went into waitressing. Full yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. That was it. And that was just like impossible then for mm-hmm. some girls to meet somebody. Yeah. You know, you start going out with a guy who's in construction. I think the mentality here to meet people is very different than it is at home. Right. It's like people just want to date, people want to be single, you know? Yeah. So... That's just the way it is here. Like I it think, is, isn't you know, it? Yeah. People don't really. Yeah. Yeah. And people definitely prioritize work. You know, everyone does. Yeah. I think. But do you think that's also a part of? They're a little braver to be single here, yeah. and they're not judged to be yeah. single. Yeah. Whereas at home, it's kind of like if you're not in, if you're not in a relationship, you're not in a group, you're not getting invited. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a little bit more. I do have a lot of single friends at home though, as well. Yeah. I think times are changing and. You know, it's just going to yeah. be a case where not everyone's going to... Bring them over here some Friday night downstairs, they'll be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I, I just feel that I, I'd be wondering which is the difference, because it is difficult here, like, mm. you can see it here. Yeah, uh, definitely. Because I always get a good laugh, I'd be winding the lads up, like, I don't wonder what you're thinking as regards marrying outside your culture now, I'm going on, like, I'm 110 here. <laughs> but I'd be laughing, like, because I always, att- always like the Kerry lads more so over this. Mm. Like they're mad to hook up with the like the Puerto Rican girl or the you know the, the exotic girl mm. blah blah blah, but yet they're the one county that are mad to move home as well. Yeah, and I'm like, bro, you should have thought about getting the Colombian wife before you wanted to move back to the hills of Balance Gallegs. Like, oh my god, that's so. Funny. Like, and you deceive them, like, and they're like, no, Johnny, I'm not going to have an Irish board. I didn't come over here for an Irish board. I'm going for the fucking, you know, I'm going for the exotic board. That's and so then next funny. thing they're like, the I'm moving home. Like, I say, she can barely speak to walk around Queens, and you want to walk around bleeding. Carsevine with yeah. her. <laughs> I have to say, one of my friends is going out with somebody. Um, I forget where she's from, but she didn't speak any English. Yeah, I bet she's Eastern Kerry. No, <laughs> no she's not actually. Um, Healy <laughs> but she's so funny. Like she's got great crack, like as well. You know, yeah. so it's like sometimes you can get over the the cultural. Oh, listen, I good luck to them. Who cares where they're from yeah, or what yeah. difference it makes? I'm not. I just think it's. But yeah, they're not I, trying to move home. I yeah. just <laughs> find that it, this is just me now. It's that. You're marrying somebody from any someone you've met in New York, basically mm. that's not Irish. It's nearly like you're committing there and then. Well, I'm here it. for life. Totally, yeah, yeah. Like, cause my thing is, well, if you met It'd in New York, yeah, if you met yeah. in New York, like there's a good chance. And females in general are probably more inclined to go m- move closer to home. Mm. So, like, if you meet a girl one night out and you're in like down in Phoebe's downtown or in the Mean Fiddler at four in the morning, you better find out if she's from Idaho or somewhere there first before you continue it any mm. further. Just because she's in American and she's in New York doesn't mean she actually is from New York. The yeah. next thing you your next thing you're living in Cleveland or something. Like, you say, how did that happen? I didn't see that coming. Yeah. So yeah, that's interesting now that you just I just see with you with the girls and stuff. You are lucky, mm. and I genuinely mean that. Like because I feel years ago, when they were illegal and stuff like that, you had no other choice but to go into a waitressing industry. Yeah. And these are probably would have been well educated girls that had good you know mm-hmm. good degrees and stuff like that but just mm-hmm. wanted to come here next thing there were three months here for my next thing is five years have gone 
that's all behind them and you're leaving a bar at four or five in the morning you know after yes, being working they would have never agreed to work that like that at home i'm complimenting for working i did it myself mm-hmm. but they would have never signed up for that at home yeah there's no way and you end up in the whole community then the waitress the bartender mm-hmm. the drink and the drugs and the whole and everything and next thing it just gets out of hand yeah and boom next thing you're illegal and you're in your mid-30s and you're single and you're living in new york and you're like what fucking happened there yeah and there's too many people get caught up in that and gladly your generation i don't see it happening anymore not as much anyway yeah it's not as easy for people to come over anymore well i just think the younger generation are much better educated and they're coming straight to new york with degrees yeah. and they're coming straight here with visas they're getting heard straight out of ireland and like yeah. you after the two years you had something to go home to you had mm-hmm. something to fall back on yeah like the dog he's going home for the summer <coughs> i don't know i think just going forward for the irish american community it's, it's it's getting so hard to get a visa to come yeah home. yeah and, and you know and i've seen that with laura but i've seen that with so many people now you hear not just so that what i'm just saying there the, is just the options aren't yeah. there like what, what 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 do you get yeah like what i did like i'm 35 now i went back to, i did I have a master's in history and i went back to i did a second master's like three years ago in journalism mm-hmm. i got the grad visa out of that then like that was my only kind mm-hmm. of option at my age like go back and get the grad visa and then try and get another visa on mm-hmm. top of it you can't get a working visa to come over here. Yeah. Like, it's basically That's why I've, I just feel so lucky that yeah. I had the opportunity to get this one, like, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. It's the lack it's of knowledge easy. on the visas as well. We spoke that with Jeff here one night, didn't we, on this before. But it, it's the... It's, it's nearly like you were cooped there. You mm. heard so many different reasons. I'll oh, get this and get that. Nobody knows. There's no, like... And then it's like, even if you think you figured it out, it kind of yeah. depends who you meet. And who, if they approve you or not, you could have everything lined up. You could have everything paid for yeah but they yeah. might just say no like you it know? really boils down to as you said earlier and this is whether it be Coop or whether it be mm. one of the lads or one of the girls it's the person at the desk if somebody's With just the power, gives you, if they're on a power trip that they day give you then I think they, they, they just kind of resent that people are coming a little bit on this visa I've always had this thing that I joke mm. and say the immigration guys are pissed off because they're in Ireland working mm. they're doing their two year stint and they see and the it's Irish. raining every day and yeah. it's cold and then like I'm sure some people but like I've heard numerous people getting stopped at Christmas there coming back. And these are mm. people on grad visas. Visas, yeah. like, they're not illegal. They haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, And they're getting pulled aside. Their phones are getting taken off them. They're going through their WhatsApps. They're, really? going, through, they're, yeah. they're going through all the phones, yeah. They're going through the phones now. Even that's very common now. So I was playing football last summer, and there was fellas coming over. So I don't know, do you follow GA or any No, or, I know that they or, would come over. Yeah, the so summer, they'd come yeah. over. They'd, do their 90, they'd, 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 they'd use their, their 90 day ESTA, and they'd play. And so you can get, like... Um, the clubs can get ninth, can get sanctioned, so they can like mm-hmm. bring four fellas over. There was fellas getting stopped and g- getting turned back because they were going through their phones. They were finding p- a pair of football well, boots. I've heard that for years, though. I've heard, I've heard I've always heard don't pack your football boots. Oh, yeah, all yeah. this kind of stuff. There's definitely fellas oh, last yeah. year. Listen, it's, 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 you're going to it's, it's ramped in two yeah. weeks' time. You're going to hear it with people coming over with the musicians. And to be honest with you, I d- I'm not saying I don't have any sympathy for them, but they're they're coming on a 90 day visa, and you're putting in boots and you're putting in hurls and you're putting in yeah. stuff there. Some of them people were actually putting their return flight 90 days later as well and having enough funds to last them a long weekend. But I'm talking about people even with visas here getting stopped, going home for Christmas and coming back and going through, like, lads and asking, you know, do you smoke weed, do you do this and do you do that, and going through their phones and all. like For no reason. But as you said, Michael, like, you know... They said, like, get in the queue and get your visa. She said, it's not like there is a visa there. Not, yeah, there's not. There's not. It's a little temptation of giving you this, I'll come over, and then you get a year or two. The grad visa, it does sound great in theory. But like, you only get two years on it, and then you're like, oh, where do you I go from here? You get one year, don't you? you yeah, get, well, by the time you extend it out, I think you... It's one year. Oh, you can do the B, the you B1, B2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But she, there's not really much point in doing that, is there? Because... You you're just extending it out. Two years if you do yeah, that. it's, 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 it's what's the option then after it. So then, like, yeah. you, do you go to the H one B, which is, is a lottery, is only RDO, I want the O, and um, th- which is a lottery. Yeah. So yeah. then you're you're over here for a year and a half or whatever, and then you're trying to go through the lottery system, and you probably have to go home in between, and it's just there's no options. There was. It's so expensive as well. They were oh. trying to push an, an E three <laughs> visa last year. Did you ever hear Charlotte's story? Sorry to interrupt. No, no. Did you never hear Ch- Charlotte's citizen story? No. no. Well, she was born here, wasn't she? No. No. So she, said she, she went born. in after her, she applied for the grad visa, went into the embassy, was there for two hours, questioned nonstop. She'll tell the story way better than me. But um, basically, she's a citizen and that she left with a passport and she never knew. She was born in the UK um, um, and it was a loophole at that time because her mother was from here and not married. But when then her parents got married, like mm. 
pretty soon after she was born. So all, none of her brothers are citizens, just her. And she found out that day in the embassy after two hours of being questioned. And she had no idea. Yeah, and her mom applied me. for them before. Her mom only lived here for three years. So her mum had applied for when she was younger. Younger, yeah. For all yeah, of she them. would have had to have done she it when... She didn't say, oh, we've had, we had Charlotte before we got married, or, you know. Yeah, so she applied when she was young, and then she got it, but never knew she had it. Never knew she had it. Wow, that's not well, she a bad didn't two get hours. It. She didn't get it. Oh, she she, they were denied. All of them were denied because like, they didn't look into it at the time. That they didn't. Yeah, there's an age bracket you pass if mm-hmm. you don't do it in the early days. And also, I think her mum has to pay a certain amount of taxes. Something like no, that. No, it's, it's basically the loophole was in that year, the year Charlotte was born, if you were born out of wedlock, out of wedlock, out of the States, or in the UK or something. Right, okay. You to were, her, and her mother being American. like. Yeah. Even though her mom was born here and lived here for three years. Wow, isn't it great that her mom was a floozy? Can we say that on the so podcast? So lucky. Say what you want. So she's lucky. So she sorted like she's... She's yeah. that's great. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I but her brothers seen. didn't get it. <laughs> I love that. That's like having hair and your brothers being bald. <laughs> 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 I'm an American. So we just need to get Charlotte married off. You shouldn't have told us that now. Jesus. I'm going to start putting a bid on Charlotte there on the <laughs> long haul Instagram. <laughs> See what price we can get it up to. to yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a going rate, I was told last night was fifteen. Yeah, I was talking to a girl here last night. There was a there was a wedding here yesterday. Nobody know when they oh, this yeah. podcast went out, so yeah. there was a I call ice. There was a wedding here yesterday and the boyfriend and the groom were here, which was kinda really handy. <laughs> they were drinking together. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> With your two old dads. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to have my blue passport anyway, and it is lovely to have. But I was joking there about the queue earlier in the Dibby airport. You actually, mm-hmm. a tip for people, you don't have to go into the American queue if you have an American passport, if you were born in Ireland. So, you know, when you go to the counter. It means nothing to us. It means nothing to you, doesn't yeah, it? We don't mm-hmm. care. It's all it is. Mm-hmm. It means something to me and Coop, right? Coop's a citizen. Yeah. <laughs> you have a little passport, pet passport. Does it really? Do they have pet passports? Mm. That's deadly. Did they hold it up and look at his face? I don't know, man. <laughs> Did it's it's optional to put a picture in there. You think I would have, but I was a bit lazy. So. Put the one that he got all the likes for. Yeah, I would. <laughs> put one in in his like, Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, and your man said, oh, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have great colour. Mm. Look at this dog. You're comfy. He's big. Definitely getting Charlotte on now to find out about this. Mm. Jesus, find out what her mum and dad were up to. <laughs> That's a fascinating story. Mm. That is she tell, like she'll tell you all the questions and everything. Like she thought, or the, what did they say to her? We don't give US, uh, we don't get you. You give US visas to citizens. She was like, what? She was so upset. She thought she was being denied. You know. Yeah. She told everyone she was moving, and they said we don't give visas to citizens. So she got a passport, paid a hundred dollars, got a passport, got a refund for everything else. That is amazing. So I knew she had said something a couple I'd never heard anything like that yeah I know uh, she was leaving then and they called her back in and said and she was like I knew it was too good to be true and they said oh we just wanted to show you to the other guys this is the, only the second time this has happened in like however many years or something. there's no better feeling I have to say I did my citizenship downtown and I was just like I was so bored by the end of the ceremony and all it is painful like it's just it's just this repetitive stuff people mm. walking in and out and you're yeah, anyway but when I picked up the passport I remember I paid an extra like because I needed it within the week so I paid mm. a couple of hundred dollars and I remember going down on a Friday afternoon to pick it up and when your man handed it out and just seen that blue passport that was like, especially when you know the struggle of oh, visas and I was an immigrant I what, was, I was when in did you get what year was it when you got 2012 you're here since what 2002 2001 2001 mm. I went in and out I went in and out through immigration three or four times mm. I, like I, I used to just blag it I used to go late at night I used to fly into Heathrow. I that was risky, man. So he used to go back home and back here illegally. Oh, wow, you're lucky. Yeah, I, I, you know, I did it. It's stupid looking enough. back at it in a way. Yeah. Well, I think you could, but I just think that people don't. Mm. You know, I know everyone says the fingerprinting thing. Listen, if they wanted to find out about us, they would. Mm. You know, if they wanted, they do. I'm not encouraging it, obviously I'm not, but I do have to say, I won't say I don't have sympathy for people, but... If you were illegal and you were trying to come into the country and you were going through Dublin or Shannon, you mm. kind of deserve to get stopped. Mm-hmm. Because these are US people on Irish soil. You're giving them that massive window there. Just like over the years, I always heard stories about guys getting taken off the plane. But I used to fly out of Dublin into Heathrow and I'd get the, late, the latest flight I could out of Heathrow into JFK or into Newark. 
So I remember being delayed for two hours once in Heathrow and I was delighted. Because mm. I knew... Now, I'm not making this sound like I, I, I like was having a great time. Looking back, at it was stupid. Like, yeah, I can imagine how stressful yeah, that was. Oh, I don't know if I'd oh, do it just with the stress oh, alone. I cut one of my trips short. By, like, I was supposed to go home for two weeks. I was back within 10 days because I just needed to get over with. Like, it was that bird and it was hanging over mm. me the whole time. But I remember getting to Newark and, uh, and the woman saying, come on, we want to go home too. And she was rushing me down the aisle. I get up in front of the guy. I don't think the guy even looked at me. Mm. He was asking me questions as so he was standing. So you don't get that anymore. Like they really yeah. stop and look at you now. I've yeah. never, not in years, yeah. had anything like that. Yeah. Always questioned. Yeah. But do, do you, but are you talking about getting questioned in Dublin or Shannon? But Both, yeah. Yeah. See, I, I feel they always did that. Whereas I feel JFK now, it, to me, it's still human error. If you get in late at night in JFK and there's a queue out the, out the mm. road, it's your, he wants to go home like everyone else. Mm. And no disrespect, yeah. but like you're a white English speaking person that comes up in front of him. He's pretty much like, oh, whatever. What's the worst that could happen here? Unless you really stand out. Mm-hmm. Now I say all that. I got to Hawaii once and they had a file on me. <laughs> yeah, I was in the office in Hawaii for about four hours. Oh, they? my God. They knew everything. They had my address. They had the works. They had everything. Jeez. I just kept saying it wasn't me. Just kept saying. I, kept, I said I knew the apartment. I've been in the apartment. It's my friend's apartment. Oh, they called my friend and everything. My friend was in. They called his number the whole lot. And they asked him, did he know me? And he said, yeah. And they said, when did you last see him? He said, he was here at Christmas. And they said, was he with you in 04? And he says, I don't know. And they were like, you did, they gave it, it got a bit like, uh, what, you don't know if somebody stayed with you in 04? And this guy would be, you know, he'd be, he'd be well up to them. And he was like, he said, we're Irish. A lot of people come visit us at times. We don't take a logbook. And they were like, so, okay, thanks for having hung up. And then what happened was I kind of turned... Nowadays it, he would know because social media. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I kind of turned it on them and I, I turned around and I just said, listen, it's not possible. I wasn't there in 2004. And I said, can you make a decision today, whatever you're doing? I said, because right now you're eating into my holiday. So either send me to Ireland, send me back to Australia or send me home, whatever. Does it work that way now? I don't think it does. No, probably <laughs> not. from your experience. No, but you ha- I had to roll, my di- roll the dice. Like, whereas now fingerprints, they can prove it all mm. anyway. At that yeah, time, true. there was yeah, no yeah, fingerprints. Yeah. As in, they can prove it all if they get you into that situation, mm. if they really want to prove it. But I even believe then they could have proved it if they wanted as well. Mm. They were proving it. The thing is that you don't realize is everyone says about the fingerprint when they're coming in. When you leave, nobody stamps your passport. You don't see immigration when you leave America. Mm. so years ago you used to come here and you got a green slip that went into your passport mm. so they used to staple it into your passport now when you take that and throw it away and then you used to fly home with Aer Lingus and you'd have said you were only here X amount of time and the girl in Aer Lingus would always say where's your green slip so I don't know where it is must have lost it so they, were, they were used to it why are things as simple as they used but to but they used to give you another green s- electronic now the passports gir- won't even be around yeah. much longer the girls in Aer Lingus used to give you another green slip <laughs> and what you would do is, is just fill it out slightly wrong because she just needed it for her spike so you'd fill it out wrong you'd put your date of birth the wrong way around things were way leave. easier back then oh they were but, and, like, but people always say oh 9-11 stopped all that I got here in 9-11 I got here in May 2001 I went home in 03, 04, 06 and then I got stopped in 08 in Hawaii mm. and that was the end of it <laughs> do you remember I'm nearly conv- I was here about 13 or 14 years ago and I think I remember scanning out of the airport to go home did that ever come in? I no. think just figment to my imagination probably is just, yeah. yeah it might have been just to get your boarding pass JFK is supposed to be supposed to be easy you know, alright if you're coming back coming back through yeah right our attorney said that Newark is a void Dublin when you're coming out of home is a void at all costs yeah totally and Shannon like I don't know <laughs> that, that, I, to me that was risky bringing the dog over because they just give you it's just one like, it's just one, f- a, it's a fella having a bad day. And he could say... Mm. No, I know, I was could, like so nervous could about deny it. Yeah. Like, I was coming back at Christmas and they asked me five questions. Who do you work for? Who do you write for? Um, Who asked you? The guy at the... the in, Dub- oh, in, in Dublin. In Dublin, yeah. So you're in US immigration in Dublin. I flew from Shannon this time. They were sounding I was just Shannon again. And I was I knew this. I was, I was coming up and I thought, I thought like, from the look of the fair, she'd short hair, but I thought it was actually, I thought it was a woman first. And I was like, I'm going to be right nice and happy. And I was going to go up and say, hi, madam. I just, I just changed mine didn't. at the last second. And I turned around and it was a guy like, mm. it was just the way he was. He wasn't like... It was just the way I looked at me, the shark and the step haircut, like an old st- step haircut. How did they get stationed there, but Like, I always imagined that. Like, so he signs up, he gets a job in immigration, mm. and then he's going home telling the wife, oh, we're going to Shannon. 
she thinks that's somewhere in Aruba or somewhere somewhere really nice and then she looks it up and realises I'd imagine ah, but they, they Americans love around. Ireland it's like yeah. for a while before yeah, but they go uh, there and realise the weather so yeah. bad yeah. that's what I'm saying like us they're fine but then when they're working in immigration there for because I think they have to do two years there do they? I think so yeah so some of them are actually American citizens, Irish uh, American citizens. Well, at least they're, they're, they're in Shannon, then at least they're close to Limerick. They're Homeland Security. Limerick's fine. Yeah, but yeah. what I'm saying is, like, I think some of them would be... Some of them, I know there was a woman that worked in one anyway, she was from Tipperary, but she was an American citizen, and that's how she worked with them. So for her, it was fine. But that's why I always think that they're kind of pissed, because here's you, all chirpy, rocking up there in January, heading back to New York, and he's, like, going, I'm going to fuck him. I, I'm going to put a bounce on that fella's step there now and we'll see because he's stuck there and you're not yeah. Yeah. but the, 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 the point I was making sorry was the guy in Dublin the guy in Shannon all he used to say to Michael Dorgan is not happening today go yeah, away exactly. That's what I mean, and he yeah. doesn't have to do any work he doesn't do anything yeah. you get to JFK you get to Newark you get to any of these places they will have to be sure because they have to put a lot of work into getting you back home mm. so unless you've done something really wrong they're just they're going to hold you and they're going to send you back sometimes you think it's handier so it takes a lot again I'm not recommending any because it's a horrible flight but even some of these people that we're talking about at Christmas they're just even coming back on their own visas which are, if I was advising any one of them I would not go through Dublin or Shannon I would fly through Heathrow if I was them just yeah. to get to America yeah. on, a, on one of these visas these, these even if they have like totally illegal visas I know not, not a green card yeah. or anything like that but any of these what, what, what do you call them the H2 or the HB visa H1B the H1B, H1B. So because some of the lads are probably not supposed to travel a lot on them and or there's, right, different, yeah. there's different rules with them but so it, many rules it'd yeah. only take an awkward guy like I know I, I'm not naming names but I know a few construction guys that have these visas that were stopped over Christmas mm. and it was for just little things they were asked about their own personal life mm. do you do this or do you do that and then one of them said oh yeah well I smoke a bit of weed or do this straight away phone off him went through his phone and true, he's what's up. I know, just <laughs> stupid. Like in his head, he was definitely a they're trying to be trying yeah. to do the right thing. And but like, what a question to ask your man. Mm. He knew what he was doing. Like, and your man was stupid. Just, just say nothing to anything. Mm. But other little thing. But he gets to New York through Heathrow. That question's not getting asked. Yeah. And even if it does, he ain't getting deported for that. Because mm. your man has a visa. And this guy was here with his, you know, him and his partner. Mm. And she, her visa was on the back of his visa. Next thing you're back, you're gone, you're living at home. Stupid answer, but at the same time. Dublin's gone crazy. Yeah. But even when we came over initially, we went to Belfast for our, to do our visa interview in the embassy up there. We were told even by use it at home to stay away from Dublin. Yeah. Mm. To stay away from Dublin. So we were going, and everyone, there's people from Scotland coming over, there's people from London. I've heard horror stories. Belfast. Everyone's going to Belfast. It was like when we went to Barbados for our last ones. We, th- <laughs> we thought it, it was going great, to be. didn't it? <laughs> it was great. Well, that was kind of, it was an anonymous. Anomaly, but that was administrative processing or whatever. Like, but I did, I did when I was working at Irish Central last year. I did an article on the Estas and all that, and I got onto an attorney, and he said none of the rules have changed for all those officers. It's just mainly because there's a new president mm. that it's he's the only they got extra powers last year saying they can can go through phones, but there's no extra powers that they've been given to stop people. They're just implementing rules more yeah. rigorously that that was yeah. there already. So do you think if people fought it more on their own end then? No, I was just, they were a bit more relaxed the last couple of years, but now it's coming from, it's like you know, yeah. management coming to a bar oh, or something. Totally, yeah. And it's the yeah. next thing. Yeah. Do you know, the rules are there already, but people aren't, aren't sticking. I think it's it. like, I love America. I love everything about it. The people, the positive. It just, I literally couldn't say enough about America. I love it. But that's the one thing. It's just a horrible face in America. Mm. I always imagine our parents going up there. But to come to America to see their kids, what's with all the questions? Yeah. Mm. You know, where are you staying? What address are you doing? What are you doing over there? But I think my mum's coming to get a waitressing job in Times Square, like, at 70 years of age. Mm. You know? Yeah, everyone's always scared. It's a, it, but it's just, it's just their, their own cold demeanour, even when they're not mm. even asking you 110 questions. It's, I, I, I don't like it because it's not America. It's not fair in America. I remember when I went up, it was two years ago, I was coming over to go to a fashion show, and I went up to the guy before he was ready, but I didn't know. Oh, shit. Yeah, no. yeah. And then, sure, he, he was like, you're supposed to wait. And I was like, oh. And then I was like, do I go back? What do I do? And sure, I was brought in for questioning for an hour and a half. Like that, that's th- literally probably why, because I went up before like he was Like, don't ready. tell me that's not a power trip. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that I could tell he was in a bad mood. I was like, this isn't going to go well. Like that, that visa you mentioned there earlier on, the, the O visa. Yeah. That's an entertainment visa, am I right? Yeah. It's, it's, people, it's people with extraordinary ability. 
You're just saying that because you have one? No, because Louise has one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one. I'm going to cut that. Right. We, we can, if you want to mention visas. Well, but I that's heard. the, but the way, that visa was for people like Louise. Right. Like, that are so, like global brands or whatever, mm-hmm. like, and it was just, I'm just going to cut this. Have you ever, uh, no, well, well, there's a reason I think this is important. Have you ever been asked, like, what are you going over for? And you always associate it to work, right? Yeah. So Connor won't mind me telling this. Yeah. But Connor Moore is on the same visa, right? And he came over recently, and the guy asked him, he says, what are you going over for? Oh, yeah. And Connor goes, oh, I'm just going over. He says, my brother's getting married, so we're going to a bit of a stag party. He says, and then we're heading down to Mexico for the wedding. And the man's going, so you're not working? No, not this time. Just going over to the oak. And your man goes, well, there lies the problem. Pulls him in, brings him into the office. But because Connor had said to him, he was going on a social aspect. Even though... The, Does he not live here? He... He comes, he, back, and he forth, comes back, and back and forth. He comes back and forth, but that's through his work. He's, mm. he's sponsored through the Golf Channel, so he oh. works for the Golf Channel. So he's on the O as well. So he's on the O back and forth. But th- I don't think it was an issue whether he lives here or not. Your mm. man just said, oh, you're, you know, are you going home or are you doing? He said, no, I'm going. For and I know someone else who, someone else that that happened to as well, who's, who's married to somebody with an O visa, mm. and she was coming without him. And when they asked her, where is your husband? She says, oh, I'm going to America with someone else, like... I got my mother and she got pulled in and got, had to go in and apply for an ESTA. I have to wait? Even though she has an old visa on the basis of her partner. What? And she nearly missed her flight on the basis of it. Oh my God. Now, she, she'll know better next time, I guess, and so will Connor, but come on. Yeah. Is that really, like, that's just, that yeah, to me is just over the yeah. top. That's like you're walking up to the counter. Like, come on, what difference does it make? Yeah, yeah. You still have a visa to go. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to change. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. So don't tell them. Every time you come, we'll, cut all, this to work. Vi- we'll cut all this visa stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you but want. I do think it's a good topic at some stage for it somebody is, because like, there's yeah. loads of people. But, it'd but be I'm just saying that we can do it afterwards yeah. because some people don't want to talk. Don't want to talk. No, but it'd be, a, it'd be a good thing if you could get a lawyer on. We, that's what we were. That's Lord, what we were. Around, yeah, he won't do it apparently. He won't do it. But the guy I did, I did an article last year, and it was the Esther things for our Central, and your man was very obliging, and he wanted to do a column on it. But I think it's it's something that we had talked about doing this podcast. That it's like everyone's talking about it, but no one's talking about it in the papers. If or you've got five different people media. here from lads that are sponsored with like Reedy Construction to yourselves to someone else. Five different people have five different stories about probably getting the same visa, mm. and uh, like with Coop, nobody knows like which visa. And then you'd listen to someone, "Oh, go for this or go for that," mm. and then you end up you're stuck at home for two and three months and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I know numerous people that that's happened to because they went to, to, of the advice that they were told. There was mm-hmm. no avoiding it. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. it's even though that those snippets of information there now, like that if my, if myself or Louise were going home and our oh, oh and we yeah, we're coming back go, again. Yeah. And we had nothing lined up. Connor Moore was after finding out that he has to have work. Sure. Well, he doesn't have to. He just has to know what to answer. Mm. So he was coming back over. He thought that he could go back and forth for the, t- the three years because mm. he was tight. But he had no specific work lined up. Lined yeah, up he was just honest when your man asked him, what are you going over for? He had to get an S then, didn't he? No, he, your man let him away with it. I think he genuinely did a couple of impersonations. <laughs> she had to get the S book. I thought he said he had to get an Esther. He had to pay the fifteen dollars to get an Esther to go down. To Maybe right now. I, I know she did. The girl that's like a, has a truer partner, yeah. but he definitely um, he he. But he was on the verge of getting stopped. The guy was, and the guy kind of said it to him as if to say, "You're after creating this problem." And like it, it was it was, you, it was him. He said it to you. Know? Mm. He was like, "Oh, wi-, he more or less looked at him as if to say, I wish you hadn't told me that.' You know." Yeah. She's a great trivia girl, isn't she? Fucking hell. Don't have this on anymore. And did you, when you were in school, no, just go back to when you were in Is it always fashion when you were in school? Or um, yeah, it was always something I was interested in, but I didn't think it was going to be a career option. Like, you know. Um, and how long were you in Dublin for then? Sorry, um, just fast forwarding. I down. went straight from school to college in Dublin. And I was there for eight years, bar one year when I was here. Or you? Yeah. All right, okay. So, yeah. Dublin's like my second home now. Yeah, so you were blog- how many year- you were so you were blogging for a good couple of years in, in Dublin before yeah, you came. Yeah, for for what was it three years I guess when I moved yeah. home. So I'm three years full time in July. So all right. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. What's the difference between here and Dublin for fashion? Obviously, a lot more opportunity. Would um, that be? Yeah, um, it's a d- different type. Like it's a different type of blogging. You know. At home, people are much more real-time, raw, sharing everything. Stories are huge at home. Here, like, I haven't found a blogger who has the same engagement in stories that I have. All right. Even if they have triple my following, they don't have the same people watching their stories. It's so weird. 
And is it is it that because your Irish followers like so? It's Irish <laughs> Irish people are following stories yeah, more than yeah, and but we use it more. Yeah, like in America, they don't you you won't find a blogger with probably as many chapters either. You know. Yeah. Were you on? Did you say you were on Snapchat? I was before? on Snapchat. I had it anymore. No, I d- died like, when Instagram stories came exactly, out. Exactly. Yeah, it's mm. like it's it's funny. Like it was yeah. just they just it just Instagram just did stories and everyone went onto what's the point thing on on two platforms. Mm. So, but even that, like um, when we were on talking about you know the the exposure it gives and like Louise Cooney was in this bar or it's like you've become a, like almost like a Yelp or, or bloggers have become like mm-hmm. you know because they trust you mm-hmm. because they're living with you every day mm-hmm. so it's when I was in the airport in Dublin coming back last month um, this guy came up to me he was probably 40 I'd say and he was like oh I was in New York and we went to Restoration Hardware based on your recommendation and we went to he started listing off places he's like thanks so much yeah my wife was really happy I was like, okay. that's Jeez. brilliant isn't it yeah. yeah it really is like because mm. i even find like i'd say searching through instagram now mm. i'd search through quicker now than i would through google oh totally yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. when you're trying to decide what to order see what looks yeah. good on the you search through yeah. it like it but really is that's great to someone's walking up to you in the airport and yeah. saying that they, like it must give you great satisfaction as well that yeah, you're thinking does, well, yeah. geez, there's a a guy in his 40s who's like not afraid to even say mm. you know give you the old heads up and say thanks for that that's brilliant mm. so would Celia Holman Lee been one of your main um, tutors in the in the industry well she doesn't do blogging but yeah she taught me a lot like about um, having confidence I suppose in yourself and um, I met people through her I suppose and okay. yeah and the, the editing hard work she's yeah. some hard worker like you know See? yeah and the video editing and the photo editing, was that something um, that you learned? So I did a little bit of that in college. And then a lot of it, you can teach yourself that stuff now. Like, yeah. you know, over time, you pick things up from people and yeah. always learning, you know. Do you like doing a video? I know it's time consuming. Do you like doing it? I do sometimes. Like, I find it therapeutic. It's more the yeah. shooting of the video that I'm like, oh, God, now I have to go and shoot something. And yeah. But are you doing, yeah. so you're doing your Instagram stories on your phone and then you have a different phone for YouTube? I have a camera, yeah. Yeah, so mm. is that like, that's one thing that I always kind of... It annoys me like you want to do the phone and then you can't put it on YouTube because you're going to have that big black thing down the well, side. I t- sometimes do if I don't Probably. want to bring my camera I'll just turn my phone sideways oh, but yeah, the yeah. sound isn't as good and the picture's not as good yeah yeah but yeah. I mean it's fine every now and again like yeah yeah any fashion tips for Johnny just blown away by it but like I'm really like because I said to you I remember that time you were in Newport but I remember even places because we'd been going up there for a few years and you were after I think you had asked for recommendations maybe maybe yeah, in yeah, Newport yeah. or something mm, like yeah. that and I was yeah. like, is this how this whole thing works like? But it is genius, it is, because yeah. who better to ask? Because personally, I don't like Yelp. I don't, obviously, I'm in this industry. I don't mm-hmm. like, because it's not genuine. I think in a lot of ways, it's just, it's like the guy, it's like the bully. It's like, you know. They're mm-hmm. crooks. Yeah, it's like. They try I, to pay it to take down negative. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, they, they do. They want you to pay. 100%. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. They, they tried to get me to do advertising with them. It's and that, it's, it's that trust there again, like, you know. Yeah, no, it's like, someone you're a, you're, you're right a, you're a, a famous face that people trust you because they're living your they're living your mm-hmm. life through your stories yeah so it's, it's yeah. just a, I, it's just a so, so powerful like yeah but I agree with you because it, uh, like a, Louise writes something about a restaurant yeah. like I can find Louise in a sense it's very easy yeah. for me to get to her yeah, and that's yeah. how much it is yeah, yeah. whereas the person on Yelp like I genuinely had an experience downstairs with a customer and I happened to be serving her as we had the bar and I just I remembered like everything and three times I said, guys, everything okay? I went to her. And she had n- multiple op- opportunities to tell me. And I get that. It's not easy to say mm-hmm. this and that. But the length she went to what she wrote on, on Yelp then, because she was, um, you become um, an executive Yelper or you're an elite oh, Yelper right, or something. Okay, yeah. And so she, was she wouldn't complain to you. She waited until she went on to Yelp. And I gave her three opportunities. Said, no. And again, that part I don't mind. Because, you know, not everybody can say, to be honest, which I didn't like that or I didn't like mm-hmm. that now. But it was the detail she went into then, mm. so she could rem- remain an elite Yelper. I think oh, that's what right, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she loved, but Yelp is also encouraging them by giving them these statuses, by mm. calling them elite Yelpers. Yeah. You know, and then she feels like important about herself, but then she hasn't even the guts to say it to me. And I, I, I reached out to her and I asked her to come in and see me. I said, Do you want to come in and see me and talk about that? Or I said, I gave you multiple opportunities. And she, she read it and she never replied. So I waited another week or two and I said, well, I guess that's what it takes to be an elite Yelper. 
through the boot in a few No, also, I did make the point of the elite Yelper type of thing. You, you have an opportunity to come in. Mm. I did do that with a guy in the past, and he came in. Do they get free food for being an elite Yelper? I'd say that's what they're angling at, are they? I would say so. I think that like, I there's think some horror stories when you go back, if you read up about Yelp, about people coming in, like, especially in restaurants to have a waiting thing, mm. and people were walking by the queue and sitting at the table and telling the uh, telling the owner I'm, I work for Yelp or I'm an elite Yelp and I'm going to write this and write that because a lot of restaurants were fighting years ago to be removed from Yelp that they should have the right to re- be, be removed from Yelp mm. but uh, I, I don't know because the New York Times did a big article and it was really good like, now I want to go and read the reviews on, on I Yelp know. the long haul <laughs> it's really funny yeah I, I personally and I'm not just saying this some people I, I have friends of mine that are in the bar business and they're a little, I think they're a bit obsessive about them sometimes mm. My thing is, if I look at the thing and it's if you're four and a half stars or you're something like that, if you're four stars, yeah, yeah. to me that's uh, I'm okay. If I look up a hotel and I see it's four and a half stars, I'm yeah. not going to go reading the reviews. I remember my my um, grand aunt has a Montessori up in Connecticut or in like Pound Ridge area. Okay, yeah, yeah. And when my granny was alive, when she was on Facebook, she by accident went on and rated it like one star. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to like get onto get onto my mom and say, oh, "Can you can you come onto her Facebook and change that's that?" Like great. that's bringing down our whole rating. <laughs> that's great. The one star from the grandmother, and everyone knows grandmothers Peg don't lie. O'Neill has raised yeah. his grandmothers don't lie. Yeah. Like so a Montessori school. I'd see that and go, "Jesus, that grain. Why would she? Have, she'd have no reason to lie. She'd have no." But to get back to it, that's why I do, and I, I do like that the bloggers are like you know influencers because they've more skin in the game than the restaurant probably has. Mm. They, yeah. they, they know their product can't be damaged. Mm. You can't be seen to be fake on it because people see mm. right through it. And yeah. people also know, like, uh, I don't give out about things very often, like, yeah. unless it's really bad. Like, you know, right. I'm not going online to But there are people who will go online to give out about everything. Sure. And those people who take with a pinch of salt, I would anyway. Totally. But if it's someone that I'm following just because I like them and they're giving out about something, I'll take it seriously. Do you yeah. Know what I'm no, so. and, and that's good. And restaurants mm. will pick up on that, and that's why it is good for your product. Because I know, mm. like, you've even gone to my brother's place and stuff like that, and mm. he's had a great time. That. But yeah. that is massive for them, even then. Because mm. I remember at the start when my brother did one and said, Would you ask the girls to go over to? You asked me to ask Louise, like, Macker and Vincent. Like, I Louise still get people asking me, Where is that bar? Where is that bar? Yeah. <laughs> and I brought people to it last week, mm. Haswell Greens. It's like, so and fun. it's brilliant. Haswell Greens, what's three yeah. times? 52nd between 7th and 8th, is it? But they Were you there for the pianos? Yeah. Oh, it's oh, brilliant. It's brilliant. But like, uh, we, we had one complaint, though. They didn't know Fairy Tale in New York. We weren't happy about that. That's not on. That's not, not on at all. Not at all. When, in January? In February? No, it was December. Oh, it right. was. It was when the no, lads... No, actually, it was it. November. It was November. It was around Thanksgiving. <laughs> but, but it was when the lads were here. It was when the Kerry lads were here, mm. like the lads from oh, Trillet. Yeah. Oh, right, and they loved it. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. one of the lads texted me the brilliant, other day when he seen I was there, and he sent me a text, can't wait to go back to that. But the power of the social media of you's been in there for the lads. Mm. And I do feel sorry sometimes. I have friends that would be a bit older that be in the bar business. And I would try to say to them, like, you know, you know Instagram there, you might want to. And they'd be like, ah, I can't be bothered with that. Shit. It's adapt or die. And I was like, you have no idea. But you don't have to. That person doesn't have to adapt. That person, well, personally. Yeah, no, yeah. What I mean well, is, it, yeah. he has probably 10 staff in the place that are guaranteed they're all on Instagram. Mm. And like these younger generation, they're, they're all working for them. Give it to one of them to do. Do not give it to a marketing company to do. You can see right through every one of them Instagrams and they're just horrible. Mm. You come up and you just see poster, poster, poster. Mm. Like I mentioned that bar to you in Ireland there last week or something I was thinking. Mm. And their actual Instagram is just done by a company and it's one of the best bars in Ireland. But when I was r- looking in to look now at... Now I'm s- racking my brain trying to remember what bar <laughs> Oh, we can say it because I just compliment it's one of the best bars in Ireland Reedy's in Killarney oh yeah, yeah. it's a fabulous oh, yeah. bar it there, yeah. it's class yeah. but their Instagram is done by professionally or done by somebody so when I go on to look at it I think it? well it certainly looks like it is or they might do a bit of mix and match in it but when I go into the, 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 the location mm. so when people have tagged in on it it just looks much more just the detail is much better in it, if you know mm. what I mean, because I'm seeing it through both your User pictures. User experience. I'm seeing it through everyone User else. User generated yeah. content. That's what that's called. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, mm. but I can tell by their page if it is done. Their page is great, mm. but I'm finding now when I'm going in <laughs> looking for stuff, I go straight to where people have yeah. tagged in in there, yeah. and, mm. I, and it's uh, I ha- hashtag like our yeah. Yeah, yeah. but no, when you've no, checked the in, just the location. So if I put in Haswell Greens, it'll show me Haswell's official page, but underneath it'll show me the oh ping yeah, of where yeah. people have checked mm. in there, mm-hmm. and it'll show some of their old pictures of way back. Yeah. Now, 
the bars in New York that are paying the companies to do it are ten times worse because they're just posters they're putting up. Mm. Super Bowl Sunday poster and you know what's on offer. We put up them posters here to long haul. Don't get me wrong, but like that's literally at Super Bowl. These places are doing it every week. And that's more something you put on stories, I guess. Absolutely, because but how many people even go down and look through people's pictures? Mm. I ne- would never do it. Mm. I nearly never go through the roll of pictures, just the stories that go through. Mm. And I've only got five pages on the go, like, Jesus Christ. Long Hall, Westbury, J1ers, looks mm-hmm. like. You know. Will you take on J1 people here? Yeah, we do, actually. We sponsor a few through here, yeah. Mm. But that's the way the business has gone as well. Like, there was a time, like, when I came to New York and going on, like, I'm 110, when I came to New York, you couldn't get a bartending job. Mm. You couldn't get a waitress and job. Either. They were impossible to get because they were cash. Mm. People worked in them as second jobs and they were cash to get into. Like, my mate Macker now that has a, owns a lot of bars there on the west side there, Macker hires people now on the 90-day visa. He would have never dreamt of that before mm. in the Mean Fiddler or Tanners mm-hmm. or any of them places. You were telling me before, I don't know that we have it on a podcast, that I don't think we did, that if you were, you were a barman here in New York, that you, someone would have to pay you. You could buy a job. You'd buy a job. If there was How a much? G- name your price. could be 10, 10 grand, some five, 10 grand. So let's say you were working in a certain bar. We like... I didn't know anyone that ever worked in the Waldorf store. Let's just say it was the Waldorf, for argument's sake. And the guy in there said to you, what, your man's retiring, I could get you that job. you got to pay him for it. Like, that went on. But there is some bars. Probably still going on. I w- I, yeah, I've never heard of it going on too much, but there would be an element of, you wouldn't recommend the guy unless he was really good, obviously, but there might be some lads that'd be looking at it as, like, for a handshake. Mm. Personally, now I've never seen it, and I've never heard it. And some of my friends now have... But they've always changed the exchange with really good friends. Like, like there's a bar on the west side that uh, the two McNamee brothers both worked in it. And they both went on now. They have, like, what, six or seven bars. And when Michael left, he gave that job to Cahill, who was my partner here in the bar here. Okay. So they, that job was that good that the last three or four guys that have gone through it like have all have their own bars now. Cool. Yeah, but it was a really, and still is a really, really good job. What's the bar? And it's very unassuming. You would have never been in it. I guarantee you've never been in it. You wouldn't even know where it is. Oh. I know where it is. McCann's in the Port Authority. No, oh, I knew it was Port Authority. You yeah. Tell it's a bus stop. No, it's a bar in the bus yeah. station. But oh, it's in there? Oh. It's in the bus station on the second floor. They were cleaning up, right? You'd walk into it. And see, but it's like any of the bars that are in these locations. Constant. All these millions of people that come into Manhattan every day, that's, these are the places they come through. The mm. Port Authority bus terminal, Grand Central, mm. or Penn Station. If you're in there, you definitely need a drink. <laughs> you're in there, but like, oh, you, people say, oh, like, I, I remember saying it to a friend of mine that that's one of the best bars in New York, and he was like, oh, pff, are you kidding me? I go by there to feel sorry for the fellas that work in there. That's literally what he said mm. to me. I worked in there my first two weeks in America. It's been downhill ever since. That's how much money they were making in there. It, it was ju- but it was because you've good commuters that are turning yeah. over. But you could go in there at 12 o'clock in the morning and you might have a line bar. Like yeah. if each guy left you 2 or $3 dollars each drink, the stool is not empty for long. Mm. They're just turning over, turning over and turning over. Out the door, 1 o'clock, bar's closed, lads are gone home. In the bartending world, that's just like amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 1 a.m. bar, it's just unheard of. Yeah. Do you think the t- Instagram is here to stay? Because t- t- is there much influence of TikTok coming in? I just it's a new generation, yeah, but I, I, I think t- uh, Instagram are going to come out with something similar to TikTok, but right. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. And were you on Facebook before? Yeah, and my Facebook is dead now. So. Uh, it's amazing how yeah. it just... Because I remember being on Bebo. Remember Bebo? Yeah. It was like Bebo, MySpace, and Bebo was probably better because you had your little own profile, mm. you know, and it was just... And my, and it was how often did you change your skin? Flashbox. <laughs> the top 16 it was that what they called yeah. it? Was it your, your skin? You did, Wasn't it? You, yeah, where you could change so. the cover, yeah. like yeah, you yeah. could change the cover skin on skin profile, use your music and all that. Well, here's me being an idiot. Then why is face? Why was Facebook more popular than either? Well, forget about Bebo. Why was my? Why was it better than MySpace? Yeah. What did they have? What did Zuckerberg have that they didn't like? There were similar platforms, like, like easier to use, maybe. Yeah, even every time I watch like social networks, like uh, yeah. they 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 bring up that topic, you know, why are you going to be different? Yeah. Mm. And he just said we're going to be exclusive, you know. So he started out for Harvard mm. and then Stanford and everything, but then we were, you know, everyone else got onto it. But I just, you know, I suppose I don't know why is one thing better than another. He just did it better, obviously, and it just looked cleaner. It was better. Mm. I don't know. It just. Mm. Because I briefly was on my fa- or was it MySpace, yeah. and I do remember it being a little bit more awkward. Mm. I don't know, but I remember people being simple. See, I'm lucky now in the sense, like especially in Ireland, and I suppose here as well. I like I have grown past Instagram, and that like at home, 
I could do other things. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So true that's enough. That's what, what I'm trying to do here as well. Is kind of build like my brand and build it, yeah. build out my name. That's and good. working with these big fashion brand brands and other things like helps. You know? Yeah. So, so you don't necessarily have to rely so, I don't so rely, much on yeah, the I Instagram. Rely on just one thing. You know? Right. So I have my YouTube and I have couple other things i suppose on the go that yeah like and i find that not not we need to know numbers but do you see a big return from instagram mm. more so than say youtube oh, or yeah, some, yeah, something yeah, else yeah. yeah so that's, that's where people are that's where they're finding you yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great yeah yeah and has youtube have has have your numbers of views gone up or down with, with youtube since i've been moved yeah oh yeah like hugely gone, gone up. up yeah all right people okay. are just watching the whole journey and a lot of people, a lot of Irish people have gone through it, you know. Because yeah. it's, it's kind of a funny platform from, from my perspective that, like, you kind of put stuff out there and it's hard to share, or I suppose mm. Instagram is hard to share then as well. See, like, it's YouTube, you get that a little bit more. So it's like, if you want more, if you want to see more... You Extras, get, like, yeah. you, you, that's what you say, like, mm. see, click on my YouTube channel yeah, for more. if you want like, the bare minimum, then it's there you yeah, know, as well. Yeah. So. I think it really helps because I, I love the buzz when I see Irish people have come here for the first time. Mm. And they're like on it. But whereas I used to pair it up, say, before with movies. Mm. Now they're pairing it up with the likes of you. Yeah. Like totally. for years, I would like, like. I get messages every day. From yeah. People being like, love watching you yeah. on your journey. And yeah. And also, we're going over November. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, it was like, just a flat iron building. That was the last scene, the usual suspects. Mm. Now it's like, you know, there's a flat iron. That's where Louise mm-hmm. and the girls were last week. Mm-hmm. So people know it from that. So they're seeing New York. They're actually familiarizing themselves with it even before they get here. Yeah. So they've much more better plan. Mm-hmm. They're no longer going straight into Times Square and sitting in an Irish bar in Times Square yeah. and just not knowing what to do. And you see it more now, even through here, I'd say to someone, where are you staying? And I'm waiting for them to say, like, Midtown somewhere here, which is nothing wrong with it. Mm. But now they're like, oh, well, we're staying in the Bowery, we're staying in the West Village. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, high five them. <laughs> like, you're delighted that they've done that. Like, yeah. Because you can stay anywhere in Manhattan, it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter because it's. It's so well as big as it yeah. is it's small as well at the same time it's only 11 miles long like 3 miles yeah. wide or whatever like it's not that big mm-hmm. but the, like Instagram it kind of levels the playing field in that the sense that you built up your brand from scratch and like maybe in yesteryear when there was no social media that you were relying on getting jobs and getting a job back yeah. in the day might have been paying 100%. someone or to, to get along yeah. whereas people know if you're good at something you know you're going to be rewarded you're going mm. to get a following mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's great in that sense as well yeah. yeah, I'm gonna bring back out Bebo, but now you got me thinking about Bebo. I'd love <laughs> to change the skin there, you know what I mean? Just be able to put Dublin on, or you could put New York, you could put any of this crap on it. But you could also see who was looking at your Facebook. Yeah, you your write Bebo. comments public to each yeah. other. Yeah, my mum was great at doing that in the early days of Facebook. What's that? She'd be writing public comments to people and stuff like that in the early days of Facebook. But she'd be trying to advise one one nephew not to don't worry about that other fella. Like he's only this and that. Oh no. And she'd have it on her homepage, and I'd love it. I'd be texting my mum going, man, you know, you just put that public and there'd be a panic attack down. She'd be, yeah. she'd be ringing and how do I get off? And I'd be like, <laughs> you're on your own there, kid. <laughs> and that's all for this episode of the Long Haul Podcast. Please hit that subscribe button and keep up to date with all our latest episodes or check back on some previous shows, including that highly controversial interview with former Kerry County Board Chairman Pat DeBag O'Sullivan on the state of New York GA as well as podcasts with Dublin footballer Jack McCaffrey and former Galway hurler Johnny Glynn. We appreciate all feedback, so please give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter at The Long Haul Pod. Boy, dear Adney, oh, you New York girls, can you dance the polka to me? Way, Santi, boy, dear Adney.